Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Paint Desk Rumblings. Tonight, I am joined by two wonderful guests. Returning to the show, uh, and member of the Essence of War team, we have uh, Remy. How are you doing, sir? Good evening. Hello there, Madat. Yes, I'm, uh, I'm doing very well. It's a Saturday evening for me when we're recording this, so uh, pretty yep. chill. Uh, I've got, I've got a cup of tea to finish up, and then I'll move on to the wine in a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice plan you got there. Um, and the other guest we have is uh, a well-known YouTuber and a famous Muppet impersonator. It is uh, Jean, or uh, otherwise known as uh, Waldorf. Hi, how you doing? I'm a... Uh... I'm stuck at work today, actually, so I'm joining from there. So unfortunately, I won't be able to join you in painting. But I got canceled out last week, so wanted to make sure I made it this week. Yep, we're happy to have you. Uh, Thanks. Uh, I've been looking for 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 to this. Uh, yeah, so coordinating internationally is always fun, isn't it? So uh, yeah. Well done, well done yeah. on that, Matt. To get people. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I did mess up a little bit, but uh, now we're here, um, so uh, we're uh, we're all happy. Um, so I think uh, uh, Remy's been introduced to the channel uh, a bit before, um, but uh, you can uh, mention a little bit about yourself before we move on. Um, me? Yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm in I'm in the bright corner, as you can see. I'm at my painting desk again. The paint desk <laughs> ramblings. Um, yes, you know most about me, but I'm, uh, uh, I was actually an old time war gamer, but recently got back into the hobby after about 10, 15 years of not playing anything and discovered Ninth Age was, uh, one of a few games I'm very interested in basically to, to like kind of meet uh, the things I'm looking for in miniatures gaming. So pretty excited to find that there was some good games around still <laughs> after a big break. Yeah. Um, uh, do we get onto what we're painting and things tonight, or do you want to talk uh, about that? We, we'll get, get that there in a se second. Uh, so. Okay. So yeah, I'm Remy77077 on the forums for Ninth Age. I post quite a lot on there. Um, as as you said, I'm part of the Essence of War team now. We've got renamed. We were the Quick Starter team, but we wanted to name it something a little bit more flavoursome and interesting to grab people's attention, hopefully. So Essence of War is the new name, which I am pretty happy about. It's one of the names I quite liked. Um, although we do we do have an overall name of still using with the term quick play rather than quick starter yep. uh, for the kind of system. And I, again, I quite like that because we always had an issue with the naming of it being called quick starter because it was a bit too um, a bit too like it felt too much like an, a separate game. I think. No. Uh -oh. Oh, do I have some <laughs> connectivity issues now? <laughs> we do want it to be. Oh, there it goes. We okay. Uh, yeah, you're you're back now, but uh, you zoned out for a li little bit. Oh goodness! <laughs> but I, fine for me. <laughs> I think uh, we'll we'll get into the, the quick play a little bit more in the um, news yeah, section. Yeah. So we'll I think cool, we'll cool, li cool. Li leave it at that and uh, let uh, Gene introduce Good himself point. a little bit. Um, me, I'm just an old, used to always big war gamer, not just Ninth Age or um, different you know fantasy battle games in the past. But came up playing, you know, GW's game. Played that forever. Uh, Ninth Age, it went away. Ninth Age came along and picked up. Did a fantastic job with um, their own system, creating their own system, and coming up with their own rules. A very balanced set of rules as opposed to what I'd been used to playing in the past. So it's been great. And then uh, started the Wargaming from the Balcony channel on YouTube. And the idea was to do a lot of different games on that and kind of turned into a ninth age channel <laughs> <laughs> yeah i haven't really seen much uh, other content in the ninth age on, on your channel but uh, i i'm not uh, uh, that sorry about that i i do enjoy <laughs> very much enjoy your channel yeah yeah it was we used to play a ton of games and i still play some other games but you know the few videos we put out in other systems just didn't seem to spark much of an interest so yeah it's the Ninth Age channel, and I actually do play that many games, unfortunately, <laughs> or fortunately, whichever way you want to look at it. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 uh, I'm really a big fan of of your channel. I think it's one of the absolute best uh, battle report channels on on YouTube. Big part because of because you're always two on the channel, Waldorf and Statler, and that it 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 lifts the um, 
the discussion that you have um, during, <laughs> the, the, during the battles. It, it just makes it more interesting to listen to, I think. Oh, good. Thanks. That's kind of what we were going for, is to... Yeah. Because I've listened to battle reports before, and you get into the point where you're like, well, I wonder why that happened, or whatever. Yeah. And this way, he's there, and he hasn't actually... He, nine times out of ten, he was not anywhere near when I was playing. <laughs> so he's just like, you know, <laughs> well, why would you have done this, or why did this happen? Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's that's great. Uh, you, you get a, a different perspective on the game. So. Right does make it a little harder to record because you got to have the, both people available. Yeah. Um, uh, and we try to do it in person because the you know doing it online there's the little yeah. bit of a, there's the negative there where you don't have that back and forth quite as well. Yeah. Even j during COVID has that been the case? Um, for the most there was a couple weeks we did I mean early cuz I was stop I stopped playing for a long time so yeah. it actually became yeah. not a problem. But then um you know, we, we would meet at his house. He lives alone in a house, you know. <laughs> I've been spending all day alone at work, you know, in my home yeah. office and, and stuff. So it's not like we had much interaction with outside people. So, yeah, we'd go over to his house and we would still record for a, for a bit. Yeah, yeah, that that sounds fine. Absolutely fine. I'm not one to, uh, w w one to criticize uh, anything of that. So. No, although I will say I just did run a 24-person tournament in a very large basement of a firehouse and they have like a banquet hall Ooh. and we ran 24 people there yeah, i think it's ago. you did a video before that talking a little bit about uh the event oh, okay right that, that's true i, I did yeah i think i saw that so that okay. that that looked interesting how did it go did it go it went fine um we actually had 22 show up two pulled out at the last minute covid concerns and i you know, did blame them at all, refund, you know, gave them the refund, yeah. whatever. It's like, I completely understand. Yeah. Um, but we, so we went through and, um, yeah, I t kept in touch with most of the people and no one's had any issues. So yeah, that's, that's a complete, <laughs> that's yeah. a complete success <laughs> in my point. Yeah. That sounds, sounds awesome. Really? So yeah, it worked out really well. Excellent. All right. I think that's uh, the introductions out of the way. Uh, so uh, on to, we'll mention the topic that we have for tonight, which is the orcs and goblins. Uh, so maybe it would, it would have been appropriate to let you talk about your experience with orcs and goblins as well in the introduction, but uh, we'll do that at a later time. Um, so we'll be looking into the, the rules, the background and the miniatures for the orcs and goblins faction. Uh, but that's in a little while. Uh, first, we will start with the uh, Hobby Spotlight. And I think we'll start with uh, you, Rami. What are you working on? Yes, yeah, so appropriately enough, it is, of course, some orcs. As is probably why you wanted me to add this one, <laughs> there, because I am a big fan of the orcs and goblins. Um, I've written a bit, of, I have a blog. Agonas is my blog name and my YouTube channel and all that kind of stuff. It's not just about. Um, miniatures gaming of course i did i also play a lot of video games and i stream video games and things like that but um but i have started to obviously as my interests get back into miniatures gaming i've started to report a few things on there as well um so yeah um but anyway um so yes as you know i always always doing orcs and goblins pretty much i've got a few units of other things but i pretty much exclusively do orcs and goblins so right now i am painting what i have dubbed um hang on well, they're, they're a mixture of both shield wolf miniatures. In fact, I got the, uh, the box there. So there's, there were the shield wolf mountain orcs, is what they call them. And uh, also some Games Workshop Savage Oryx. And of course, I am, I've combined all the bits together, kind of kitbashed these two different um, sets uh, to make feral orcs for the Ninth Age, because I think it suits uh, pretty well like my, the way I want my feral orcs to look anyway. So yeah, they're um, games, games wolf miniatures or, <laughs> or shield workshop, which doesn't sound quite as cool. But, uh, yeah, they're, they're like they're literally like almost a 50-50 mix. Yeah. So because I really wanted to mix them up, and I've got I've got more boxes of uh, both of them, and they're both uh, easily available to get more. So that's nice. Yeah. Don't have to go onto the eBay and things like that to try and find miniatures for these two these two sets. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. How big of a unit are you doing? It's, I'm just doing 20 at a go right now. Uh, we got the base coats down. I, I mean, just even chopping them all up and modeling them all together took me 
a f I tend to get like a few evenings per week and it's a bit random how much time I spend but it took me a couple of weeks of like at my pace to get them all glued together and, and undercoated and things and then I got all the base coats done and then last night I got the first shade on so I'm applying more shades right now basically <laughs> is where we're at. Uh, 20 is it, I find yeah the number is interesting for doing orcs and goblins when you're painting them um, I find like 20 goblins is fine because they're usually quite small models but once you start painting like batch painting like 20 orcs it's uh it's quite a lot actually and um, <laughs> i may i may decide to break this up depending on how i feel like if it gets too slow going <laughs> then i might start to do it in smaller batches of like 10 or 5 or whatever yeah so that's my paint desk update yep. and a load of other nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, what that's what we're looking for so how about, about joji you said you couldn't paint at the, at the office uh, unfortunately yeah, I can't paint here but i was really using this as a driving thing to get started on my uh, great green idol i've got the old forge world model yeah i've never used it never done it myself because i've never been a fan of the rules on it but i you know everyone's telling me how good it is so i've got to get one done and try it <laughs> i don't play with un <laughs> i don't play with unpainted models in in general so and I don't do universal battles, so the only way I'm going to get to use it is to paint it up and get it on the table. Yeah, that's some dedication. <laughs> and I've got a ton of armies, so just orcs and goblins is where I'm focused. Yeah, always. <laughs> <laughs> always uh, yeah, well, a passion. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, like like uh, Madat said earlier, I do I do manage to watch quite a lot of your channel actually, and I particularly enjoy it. I particularly enjoy bat reps when they're orcs and goblins, partly <laughs> partly because they're my army, but also because they're the only army in the ninth age which I actually understand. Like I haven't played a full battle fantasy battles game of, of ninth age yet, so my knowledge of the rules and units and things is a little bit <laughs> a little bit shaky. But um, some bat reps I can follow, and if they include orcs and goblins, it really helps me <laughs> to be able to follow what's going on basically. So it's not it's not purely from a fanboy perspective it also means i can actually enjoy the channel so yeah great work on the channel as, as matt out said thank you it. It. Yeah. yeah yeah i bought a actually i bought a um vermin swarm army about a year maybe a year and a half ago from one of my uh, club mates really nice army just never played it yet <laughs> <laughs> never made the table yeah <laughs> yeah, I like I like seeing the painted models as well, so that's really cool because you get some nice photos on there. Um, and yeah, no, I don't have any uh, great green great green idol models. Is is what I haven't bought, bought any yet either. Um, again, because this uh, back back when I last played orcs and goblins in other games a long time ago, uh, that didn't exist. So <laughs> I was like, what's this? Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> So yeah, but there's a there's a few good models out there that I've got my eye on actually. So and the Forger one looks pretty cool. So. Yeah, I'm I, I'm plan planning to uh, just build my own from like uh, styrofoam and uh, oh. rocks. It it seems yeah. like a fairly easy thing to do, but uh, we'll see if I get around to it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I have. I, I probably should have gone that route. <laughs> <laughs> well, you might need two. Because I might need a second. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, for myself, I am uh, I have forsaken the Oaks and Goblins. I'm painting something completely different now. Uh, so this is a uh, Death Cult Hierarch model for my upcoming um, Undying Dynasties army. Um, so the model is from Wind... No, not from Windmaster, from Watchful Eye Studios. Uh, I backed her, their uh, uh, Terracotta Kickstarter. So this is a young necromancer from their line, um, and uh, yeah, just painting it up in some uh, colorful uh, um, colors, basically. Um, it's gonna be a fun, fun, fun little mini miniature to paint and play around with. So that's what I'm up to. <clears throat> Listen, I, I can't actually see your screen at the moment, by the way. Just to let yeah, you know. we couldn't see that. Uh, I see. Uh, I had intended to share my screen with you, uh, but th that, uh, of course, uh, messed up when um, everything else messed up. <laughs> right. So let me do a little share, uh, screen share for you. Uh, I'm sure the people watching at home got to see it, which is far more important than, than us. Uh, but now it... 
Let's see. There we go. There we go. Uh, so here you can see it as well. Uh, this little nice. So he's gonna gonna get a nice orange cloak and a pink fire and some other pink details. That's the plan at least. Um, yeah, he's part of the Terracotta Army, which is a speed painting project uh, that I started up. Though I will still spend a fair amount of time on the characters because they are uh, not the same uh, simple style as the Terracotta uh, rank and flank. And they deserve a little bit more attention, I think. So that's the route I'm going. That's right. Um, so moving on to the news. And I think we will start with a bit of sad news, uh, which is that the uh, Tabletop Solutions, uh, t Tabletop Miniature Solutions uh, company has closed down. Uh, this was three weeks ago, something like that, um, that they announced it. They've been uh, sort of in a de decline uh, a while, been hard to contact and uh, had some issues with delivery and stuff. Uh, so it was sort of hanging in the air, I think, but still very sad to see them go. They were a um, cool company that uh, did some nice work for the Ninth Age, providing miniatures and, and, and such. Um, so I, I, I have some of their miniatures as well from the um, um, Kingdom of Equitain Kickstarter. I was also a backer of the uh, uh, Vampire Covenant Kickstarter, which is which is not going to be delivered um, now, uh, which is a shame. But uh, that's the risk you're you're taking, backing a Kickstarter. Um, so sad news, but uh, it is what it is. Yeah, it's too bad. Uh, so moving on, we have the uh, Spiel Digital Expo which um, uh, Piteglio has been uh, hosting a, a sort of event at, a room, uh, about the essence of war and uh, Ninth Age in general. I think you, Remy, has been uh, a little bit involved in that. Uh, just, just a little bit, yeah, just, just joining in some of, the, some of the streams and chatting and things like that. We, we had a... We had a very lengthy ramble session about Essence of War, <laughs> so yeah. I won't I'll try to repeat, uh, repeat myself. But it was uh, it was uh, it was nice to actually chat with one of the other um, sort of people who work on the Essence of War team as well, because I haven't had a chance to voice chat with them until now. It's always been on the forum, so yeah. that was probably a highlight of that for me in some ways was being able to actually you know put a face to someone and yeah. actually have a voice chat with them. Yeah. Again, time zones and things makes it really hard to arrange quite often. Yeah. No, that's we, the... we discussed that actually, didn't we, on your on the previous time I was on here when we did a talk about what it's like to work work with the Ninth Age. Yeah, um, I think we did. But it's the, the it, global. Yeah, it it is a challenge, but um, it's uh, yeah, it's interesting. So they they are doing a lot of stuff uh, like uh, live streams and chatting about the essence of war and other th other things. They're streaming games and every uh, everything. And uh, if you want to support them, you can sign up to. Uh, the uh, Spiel website. Uh, it's easy to, to register and uh, no uh, shady business there that I noticed. And you can just go, go, go onto the, their page and uh, hit the like buttons and uh, it will uh, help them be visible on on the event. So this is of, cor of course the, the Spiel is a, a, a digital is a, a replacement of the usual large expo that they host. Um, because of COVID and all of that. Um, so if you haven't, haven't already, I encourage you to go check that out and register and uh, show some support and love for um, the Essence of War and uh, Veil of the Ages and all of that wonderful work that uh, Pateglio is doing over there. Uh, a link will be included down below in the description as normal. Um, Moving on, we have a release, an update on the rules illustrated in figures document by the Ninth Age, mm -hmm. uh, which is good to see that they are keeping it updated. It's um, it's a very useful document, I think. Um, it's n important to note that it's not rule changes, it's only clarifications. So they use a lot of different images to try and explain some of the more complex rules in interactions. Um, 
which is quite handy just to scroll through every now and then you can you will see some situation that that you uh, have encountered but didn't really know how to resolve and there is a way to resolve them and also if you ever find yourself in a situation that is tricky to resolve you can always consult it to see if you uh, if it is covered in there yeah i've got to say that's my favorite thing that ninth age has done okay the rules yep. explained in figures i love that document <laughs> yeah it's yeah. illustrated faq in some ways isn't it yeah exactly that's it yeah, and it's much easier. I mean, you can hear a rule, but to actually see how it works, yeah, it's, it's so much better. Yeah, and the document is it is so easy to navigate because it's just pictures, so you you can instantly recognize what, it, what the situation that you're looking for and all of that. So it, I think, yeah. it's a, a great addition to their um, their uh, uh, portfolio or whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah. We've done a couple videos on the past episodes of that. Yeah. And we've got one planned for next week for the uh, newest release. Oh, nice. So that's uh, if you if anyone should find uh, that uh, reading even this document is uh, too, too difficult or time consuming, I I uh, I'd recommend them to to check out your video video then where you'll go through it all and uh, <laughs> make it even easier to understand. <laughs> Well, that document's getting big. I think it's up to like yeah. some pages now. Yeah, it is. Uh, maybe the, the the downside of Ninth Age there are so many complex rules and interaction possible, but uh, they are making an effort to make it as clear as clear as as, as cool. they can. Yep. So that's nice to see. Um, next, we have the Dread Elves. They have gotten an update on the uh, uh, portal site. Um, with the background, so everything uh, related to the Dreadels that has been published so far regarding background is now available on the site. You can just go <clears throat> go there and read all about it. Um, there, were, there was quite a lot there, uh, more than I expected, really. So, um, if you're interested in the Dreadels, which are uh, soon to have, an, have a new um, legendary army book released. Um, so you want to get hyped for that, you can check out your background on the site. Is that is that new background that's um, essentially a bit of a preview then of the, some of the stuff I in there? Th I think it's only uh, only a summary of what's, what, what we've had, had so it's, far. It's just um, what we got, okay. Uh, th there was some text that I didn't recognize, not that, uh, immediately at least, so there might be a, little, a few that are new. Uh, new. Um, but I, I, I'm not sure about that. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, but that's there for you to check out if you want. Um, speaking of legendary army books, they also updated all the four ones that we have released so far um, to just match um, the uh, newest sets of rules. And uh, uh, I think they did some formatting and stuff, but it's. It's not, um, they haven't changed the background, they haven't changed the art. Um, they just made, made it a, an update to keep them in line with the Slim Book and made an announcement that they are going to uh, try and keep these more up to date with, uh, when things are released. Uh, they have changed the, the, uh, the way that they can do these releases to, so that it should be much more easy in the future, which is good to hear. Um, yeah, it's quite good if you want to print them out, but um, so they've kind of separated out. You can get like the full document with everything in like you could before, um, but you can just also separate out if you just want to make a nice print of like the background material that's not obviously not going to change. Yeah, um, you can do that separately in a separate document, um, and then they could you can have like the the document with just the rules, and you can also have the document with the rules plus the points values. But obviously, the points values are the thing that most often changes due to balance patches and things like that. Yeah, indeed. And then the, the, all, all of these three variants are also in two different um, qualities, quality. so yeah. online uh, mobile quality or uh, ha quote unquote ha uh, print quality. It's if you want to do a professional printing, you might even want to get something even more advanced, which you can get if you ask them yeah. for it. Um, but uh, th yeah, so th there are six documents now. Uh, in different uh, configurations, which seems insane, but uh, 
if they can manage it, it's all for the better. Yeah, the idea is because they're uh, the, the files that make up the source material for them, they can just update them and then basically press click and then automatically yeah. generate all those yeah. PDFs is the idea. And I just bought a printer, so I'm pretty happy with those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. And not being able to print anything out by not going into the office, I was like, right, I'm going to have a nice printer. So, mostly for anything I've printed so far is ninth age. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's nice. <laughs> um, I think that does it for the ninth age project news. We have some few miniatures uh, uh, news as well. I haven't seen that much, uh, but I did see uh, that Sigmarite, Boutique, Sigmarite Boutique are offering um, some bases on their site. Um, so they, they, these are uh, 3D printed bases, but they, they sell the, uh, the prints uh, on the site. So all kinds of different bases, uh, sizes, and uh, a few different uh, textures like swamp, and uh, lost cave, yeah, um, all, all sort of, sorts of neat, neat stuff. So if you're looking for some more themed bases, this is a good place to look, I think. I think I have listed them on the bases page as well oh. already. Maybe not these <laughs> new ones. Definitely, there's definitely a link to Sigmarite Boutique, and there's in the miniatures library. There's like a, a general link for like anywhere that does bases suitable for Ninth Age. Yeah. So they are Sigmarite Boutique. I'm pretty sure I've added them on that in the past. Yeah. So I do Add so many updates, I forget. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sigmarite Boutique, I know, would do a lot of counters for spells and, and effects and uh, things like that. So I think this is a new direction for them to also do bases. Um, a bit more into the uh, true miniature <laughs> side of things, not just the uh, accessories. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe next step they will do a a actual miniatures for sale, sale as well. Uh, we'll see. Uh, but it seems to. Um, sorry, there's one bit of Ninth Age news. Oh. To you. But yes, yeah, sorry, we did briefly mention Essence of War, but I, I'm oh yeah, a that I, I quick mention. I just <laughs> completely glanced over that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have it written I'll there. Let you <laughs> Out, so. <laughs> uh, no, that, that's that, that's terrible of me. Uh, so yes, of course, that's the, the big piece of news for, uh, um, <laughs> for, for for this episode, I think. Uh, so Essence of War was released. Um, is it two weeks ago now? Two or yeah, three? it it is only an alpha version though, so it doesn't yeah have all the material that even that was in the previous quick start. So we're working to get you that, um, but we do want like one of the reasons to kind of like slowly sort of like release this over time is we really really want people to take a look at it and give us feedback so anyone who's at all interested in a make a quicker to play a game for new people uh for new players but also for existing players if you want to play a smaller game like in a short time span when you've maybe only got an hour or two to play a battle and you haven't got time for full game of ninth age this is where this is this is where this wants to step in right yeah so um yeah, yes, and the, let's uh, take a look. <laughs> and, and and that's why it was renamed to Quick Quick Play instead because it's not just yeah. for starting out; it's also for just enjoying a game in a shorter period period of time. Yeah, yeah. Basically, um, so. And so far, uh, not all arm armies have rules. That's uh, correct, not right? Yeah, no, no. There's think there's um. I so we we're, we're, there's this, like this se is... seven different armies uh, so far, I think. Yeah, I think like that. six, six, I think, at the moment. Yeah, but yes, okay. th there will be more released over time. So yep. we're just trying to get as much feedback on the actual rules themselves. Yep. And that was part of the reason we don't want people to focus too much about, oh, but this army doesn't have this unit and things like that. Because yep. not everything from the Ninth Age, obviously, is going to be there. But we'd rather the focus right now be about, like, do these rules read well? And one of the things you brought in up there about the uh, images, Gene, as well, in the, um, in the uh, uh, illustrated... Um, Sort of FAQ thing. Uh, we maybe maybe we need more diagrams, things like that. Any kind of feedback like that on on the way it is right now would be really useful. Um, yeah, I've always so, found yes. diagrams are, are the best. Yeah, I agree. They're very very useful. I know you've been contributing to it as well, Mad Hat. So thank you very much. Yep. I, I haven't done the, the ex, uh, rules explained in the in figures document, but I have done most other figures in both Quickstarter and and um, the Night Age. So. Oh, really? 
um, yeah, I'm just waiting yeah, waiting yeah. for for Pateglio to to give give me the word, and I'll do some more Im images for Quick Start uh, Quick Play as well. Yeah. And we might have a future discussion in depth about this with you, hopefully one day, <laughs> myself and, or Pateo and maybe one of the other designers, since you've had enough of me on your channel, <laughs> maybe someone else would want to join you. But then, I mean, obviously the Essence of War team, I'm sure we'd love to do an episode with you as a, as a team <laughs> at some yeah, point as well. We, we should definitely have you on. Um, that's uh, that's on my, my on my list of things to do. do I do, I do want to play some, some games before I, uh, that happens. And I... Uh, maybe next week i will be able to to convince a friend to try it out mm -hmm. uh, but uh, we'll see yeah obviously in um corona times is difficult um yeah pateo has been running his um like we're talking about with spiel yeah um spiel digital he's been able to run um his mod for tabletop simulator so it's a little bit similar to ub i guess is another way to play digitally online um, but it does look a lot nicer, like it's a lot prettier than UB because you can actually pull in like um, actual th almost 3D images and miniatures and things like that, or even 2D standees as we like to call them. So you can actually uh, sort of scan your own models even from photos and things like that. So he's put, he's put one of my miniatures into it, which is pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I've not I've not jumped on board with the whole digital gaming thing as well as Eugene. It's not really my thing because I play so many other video games anyway, and the whole kind of point of me getting back into this hobby was to get into the painting and the models and things <laughs> like that. So as much as it's tempting in these uh, difficult times when I can't really <laughs> play any physical games, um, yeah, yeah, I'm still resisting it for now. I might jump in at some point, but probably my main interest will be for playtesting rather than like wanting to do it as a gaming thing if that makes sense yeah right. that, that, that's t totally fair i i haven't really jumped in as in either um i tried out the, the tabletop miniatures uh, no that's not uh, the, um uh what what's it called tabletop studios there's, there's a number actually the tabletop simulator simulator that, that's the one it's, i tried to try, try out is, we, yeah the potatoes mod is for that at the yeah moment. I, I i played a little bit of the arena uh with the Pateglio oh. a while ago yes yes uh, so that that's another thing he's working on but yeah um yeah, he's a very busy also, man there's also universal battle 2 which people use there's there's a bunch of other ones there's one called tabletopia which um i know he's thinking about uh making some ninth age things for that oh, as well interesting so yeah. Uh, all right. So uh, that's essence essence of war, I guess. Yeah. Um, Won't cover it in any more detail now. <laughs> no, we, we should we should do a, do a full episode about it someday. Uh, that's coming. Don't worry about it. So moving on um, to the uh, uh, release from Avengers of War, a really disturbing release, if I say so myself. Uh, so <laughs> this is the midwife of pestilence. So, uh, wow. like a plague-ridden uh, female demon thing. Um, never really quite seen anything like it. Um, but uh, I, I, th I think it's cool to see more female models, uh, and especially not female models that are like super pretty. It, 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 it's 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 not yeah. a well explored market, I think. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, kudos to them. Um, so if you have like a, a, a Demon Legion's army or uh, Wars of the Dark Arts army, this would fit right in as a glutton or uh, envy model, I think. Um, yeah, <clears throat> let's uh, get that out of our face. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, um, move on to, I have two more little news. Uh, October by uh, Pelgrim. Uh, he did a little campaign contest thing on the Ninth Age site where people were asked to paint an orc model uh, during the month of, of uh, October or October, uh, and he would he posted them up all uh, all up on a site afterwards where you could uh, uh, check it all out. And there were some really nice contributions um, to see there. I unfortunately couldn't make it. Uh, to, to participate myself, I, I really struggle to adjust my paint schedule to things like that. Um, yeah, 
I'm exactly the same for the same reason. I already had like I've got like a big queue of things that I want to paint and, yeah. and why I want to do them in that order. And it's like I can't if it fits me, great. But if yeah. it doesn't fit me, I'm like, oh well. But it was cool, like you said. I look at some of the pictures, that, some of the pictures, things people did. It was really cool. Yeah. So good job on that one. Yep. And I, I'll include a link down below so you can check it out if you want to. Uh, okay. I think we might have an issue that. <laughs> when I started sharing sharing the screen, I think you disappeared from the uh, recording. I think your sound should be fine, but you you weren't seen from that point on. So now I'll stop sharing the screen. You can't see anything anymore. Uh, whatever, <laughs> we're, we're we're fine. Um, Are we still having it. Looks like he's oh no, nope, he's there. Yeah, I, I think. Sorry, yeah, yeah, I, I think everything's fine. Uh, we just had some. You you haven't been visible for the last couple of. Uh, um, minutes or something like that. Um, so the last bit of news I have is the Corner Master, uh, which was uh, posted on the forums. Um, it's a 3D printed little device uh, that uh, it combines the a laser, uh, a line laser, and um, uh, with a uh, arc of sight. So you get a a laser uh, po pointing out from your the corner of your movement tray to show you what they can see. It's Wait, what was that called? Uh, the uh, uh, corner master on the mm. on the uh, night age site. I think it's in the painting and modeling modeling uh, section okay. of the forum. Um, I, I have a guess about who posted it, but I seem to have forget, forgotten. So if you can find it out, no Gene, you are welcome to sh shout it out. Um, and I think that's about it uh, for in news uh, for me. Do you have anything you want to add, either of you? No, I think you covered everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, been a few model releases but i guess nothing major and i'm not sure the last time and what you discussed um probably i mean i know we're going to talk about orcs and goblins models later anyway so i'll probably i'll just talk about them when we talk about things later yeah. uh, one thing that i did have written was that the um, uh, rotten factory had a kickstarter but i think it ends like about now so it it, oh. it won't be relevant to the to the um, audience at least um or, or to you if you were, you were interested <laughs> um i guess uh so um they, they just had some more miniatures uh, i don't think there was anything that particular about them um they do cool uh, rotten miniatures uh, i actually have a few of them myself uh, that i will use for a, a warband someday um so I think that's going to do it for news then. I got to tell you, I just looked up this corner master. Yeah. I just want to order one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I suspect I'll do the same. That sounds really cool. Like a fantastic I... piece. Uh, I'm not, I, I didn't see if you could order it. I know it's a 3D printed tool. So if you have a, a 3D printer, you can make one yourself. But uh, maybe so there are some services that will yeah. print one for you yeah. as well. Um, yes, I'm gonna find that out. <laughs> <laughs> yep, it it looks like a neat tool, definitely. Um, so uh, we'll go into the main section of the show, the orcs and goblins. And starting out, we have the um, the history, the background. Uh, no, other way around. We have the background, and we'll start with the history. I think. Uh, so Orcs Goblins, they are not that well explored yet in the Night Age. We have uh, a little bit of background, but um, they are not the least explored, they are not the most explored, uh, for sure. Um, definitely, uh, definitely not compared to the full army book guys. Um, but I think, I think we'll start with the history, and um, I think I'll talk us a bit uh, through this a bit, and you'll um, add anything if you, if you want. Um, so we, we started the first age, so the orcs and goblins were, uh, or the orcs at least, we do, we're not that sure about the goblins, uh, were one of the uh, um, 
races that were, were enslaved by the Saurian ancients in the first age. And they were part of the rebellion that over, overthrew them. Uh, there are some rumors that they might have even been um, the uh, most prominent factor that overthrew the, uh, the uh, Saurians. Um, supposedly there was a time in the fir first age where um, in, in, yeah, in the first age um, where all of the tribes of the Oxy Goblins were united under a single leader. But all of this is so long ago, so it's it's um, nothing uh, is too certain for sure. Um, then in the second age, um, we have a, a character that, uh, that that we know a, li a little bit about from a from the um, Circling the Abyss book. There was mentioned a goblin named Sturd, uh, who. Uh, uh, was said to have betrayed the great orc uh, of the Golden Age. Um, he's currently, th this Sturd is currently being shooed upon by a, a monstrous beast down in uh, the circle of Vanadra, possibly by Vanadra herself, um, as punishment for his uh, betrayal. And uh, uh, this this great great orc could be the same orc that led all of the or the, the orcs and goblins in the first age could also be the same orc that's mentioned as arkubad in the uh, in the world hymn um, these are all three great orcs that have, have been mentioned but they, we, we don't really know if they're all one and the same could be that um, there, there are different stories that's mixed up together and uh, yeah every, everything is a bit uncertain in, in that respect um and yeah that's pretty much all we have of history for them since then they they've just been a constant thorn in the in the side of civilization uh, waging war all across the continents um spread the, and like many factions they can be found on on every single continent and um yeah they've been causing trouble in the um in the sixth age, I think they made a great return or a coming and uh, caused some problems for the, the dwarves, certainly enough to be mentioned in the world hymn again. Um, so that's about it for history, I think. Unless you, you any of you noticed any, any part that I missed. No, you, you know more no. than me on that one, I think. <laughs> Um, Again, I would would like to see this more. I don't know, push, pushed out more publicly because I didn't know where to find most of this. Yeah, yeah, they 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 do have an issue of of much of the of the background not being that accessible. Part of the reason why I'm doing these episodes to, to try and <laughs> <laughs> make them apparent to not only my audience audience but also my guests. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I as you say, I helped um, collate. So you're talking about the the background going up on the website on just the ninthage.com rather than digging through the forums and things like that, which is yeah. kind of like to get the point was exactly like Gene said that like to get a lot of this background, you had to kind of dig through um, ninth scrolls and like forum threads and things like that. And so one of the things we were, I was like trying to do and um, I, I worked on the orcs and goblins a little bit, just like collating all the information from various places, putting it in a nice document, tagging it up so it was like ready there to, for the web team to put it on the web. So, um, yeah, the, the orcs and goblins stuff that is out, like, um, is pretty much up on there now. Um, but yeah, the interactions of like the the world him and the history of the world, I wasn't I wasn't too sure about all of that. So that's really interesting to hear. But uh, there is there is a bunch of um, law up on up on the website now. So if you go to like factions and go to orcs and goblins, you can yeah. find it there. Or you can go through the world and get links that way as well. There's a bunch of ways to find it, but yeah. it is there. I mean, okay. I, it's not. I mean, it's still like kind of like snippets of information rather than like a nice big text you can read, like like you've got in the other sort of um, full army books and. And uh, like Circle in the Abyss, which is obviously a long, a long piece like um, story. There's nothing like that yet for Orcs and Goblins, but maybe there will be one day, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, and and, the, and these these history stuff stuff are, are really the most tricky to get a handle on because they are spread out little mentions here and there. Um, yeah. 
So, just that. Um, yeah, and I've got my <laughs> I've got my site bookmarked to the forum page actually, so I missed the whole. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> I never... yeah, usually, it's just another click to get to the forum. You don't really really spend that much time on the on the portal page. Exactly. Uh, Unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, the the ninth issue, they are trying to get it out there, but uh, it's uh, it's going slowly. But uh, I do see that more and more people are talking about the background on the forums, so exactly. they're doing something right. Yeah, there was there was quite a discussion actually about some of the orcs and goblin stuff, which we'll, yeah. sure we'll get onto in a little bit. So yeah. Uh, so we will move on to um, the next big section of this, which is the broods of the uh, orcs and goblins. And since I've, I've been talking so much now, uh, do any of you want to start on that? Uh. <laughs> I, can t- I, can give you, I can give you a little bit. I mean, yeah. again, my, my knowledge of some of this is a little bit like vague because, again, I've only read like the bits and pieces and I haven't, you know, haven't been around for as long in Ninth Age. I only heard about it like a couple of years ago. So it's um, some of it's a bit new to me and haven't really sunk in. But I know we've yeah. got, so I mentioned feral orcs. Yeah, I guess in that they they classify as one of the different broods, um, and you've also got obviously common orcs, iron orcs, and then and then goblins and common goblins and um, cave goblins and different kinds of broods that way. And goblins, although not we're not sure how the goblins work. Actually. Yeah, the, the, less, the, the goblins are information. Uh, uh, the goblins are much more uh, in 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 the dark so far. Yeah, for sure. Um, but the the broods of the orc, as I say, they are they are. Part of that is the the classification of of the feral orcs and all of that. But it's so are the broods sticking around or are they going to the new? I seem to catch from the background that I saw that they're moving in a direction that the younger orcs are the ferals, then they progress and become more battle hardened and become normal orcs. Yeah. Um, so the the broods, they, these are the, the the basic social group of the orcs, orcs and goblin of the orcs at least. We don't know the goblins really. So the the orcs are they are born out of the ground um, into these the different broods, and all of the orcs that are born at the same time at the same place are part of a single brood, and they sort of stick together um, throughout their lives and uh, have have a, a uh, an order within the brood about who's the strongest and toughest, the alpha, and and all mm-hmm. the way through the, <laughs> through down, um, who who leads the brood, and then several broods they band together and uh, form a tri- tribe. Um, and and then as you said, the the age of the of the brood, they start off as feral orcs, and then they uh, become common orcs, um, who are the, the most nu- numerous. So they, these are the the fire orcs or the the, the uh, adolescents and the adults are uh, the common orcs, and they become able to uh, perform some basic um, crafting skills and uh, things like that. Whereas the fire orcs, they just run around and are angry, pretty much <laughs> from what from what we've seen. Um, I think the best source we have of this this is a field report uh, of a marshal uh, from the Emperor Stormshall who who describes some of the different he has observed a, a group of orcs and writing down what he see, sees about them. Right, even kind of named the different broods as well. Yeah, and the different individuals and all of that. Yeah, there's a little bit, there's a bunch of hints though. So this is one of the fascinating things about the background for me actually, is that like some of the hints that have been that have been left, and I know they've actually got plans, like it, it's not like... Um, background team don't know where some of this is going it's just not been you know formatted nicely and it's obviously not the priority thing because everything with the ninth age it's obviously a voluntary thing so it's all down to you know individuals having the time to work on this stuff um and obviously priorities at the project level as you said they're doing you know different army books things at the moment so box and goblins aren't the highest priority to get done but like the hints about how how they age and change isn't it isn't purely just an age thing um it is something to do with like perhaps when they encountered technology or things like that like it, it's possible to have old feral look still is the main point right it's not like you know they necessarily automatically they all start out as feral orcs, but do they do they quickly evolve as it were into common orcs and iron yeah. orcs, or do they or does it do they stay as ferals it's not like oh they automatically age okay yeah 
So yeah, they don't this, automatically um... grow out of being feral orcs. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah. And, and there's there's descriptions about why it would still work for, like, different groups of them to be fighting together, so it's not, it will make sense. And also that point about how they grow out of the ground and what causes orcs to be given birth, there's been a lot of hints about that. I'm, I'm kind of intrigued by how, how they're going to explain that one. I mean, yeah. I must say, like, generally speaking, orcs and goblins lore in most fantasy settings is a bit weak. <laughs> like, even... yeah, I'd agree with that. Um, the, um, I mean, Warhammer never really explained how, where no. they came from. They were sort of mushrooms, but the Games Workshop never really dove no. into that. And and the uh, Lord of the Rings, is it that they like tortured elves? That's what I understood them as. Yeah. They started out as elves, and then now they are something different. Right, they're corrupted uh, elves. Yeah. Tortured and corrupted elves. Yeah, uh, but are there, there female orcs in Lord of the Rings? Uh... <laughs> no one really knows. Not that I know of. So, which would be a bit weird because there are a big shortage of elves, so they can't really get more elves to corrupt. <laughs> so, uh, where do all the orcs come from? I don't know. Uh, though, <laughs> now there will be. Uh, some angry commenters in in, in the section <laughs> about Lord of the Rings because I'm sure all of this is well explained somewhere in the similar, uh, but I, I yeah. I'm not that that in into the whole thing, so I won't <laughs> criticize this, it too much. Uh, but to uh, to the common man, it doesn't appear to be any female orcs, and it's not that well explained. Okay. Uh, but I'm really not sure where where Night Age will go with this. Um, the, the constant mystery, uh, mystery of the female orc. Uh, one of the orcs that was mentioned in this field report had a female female name, but right. this was of course given by an, by an observer who just maybe saw this orc and thought it to be a bit feminine. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't necessarily mean that there are females, uh, but there could be, and and maybe that's part of their process that. Uh, they are the eggs or something are, are put in the ground where they are later born, or maybe they are mushroom, more mushroom-like, uh, and they just sprout spontaneously. Well, I do think there's some key in the name. So um, obviously, Ninth Age uses. I mean, some people still say green skins, which is sort of okay, but they, they do mention that like not all orcs are necessarily green in the Ninth Age. Yeah. Um, it can be a variety of like mottled earthy tones and things like that. I think is the description. Yeah. Um, but which like, I like. Yeah, I like that. I think it's it's good that it's not so prescriptive about how you might want to paint your models and things like that as well, which is really cool. Um, and it means like a lot more different model ranges are obviously appropriate as well. Um, I mean, you can make anything appropriate if you want to, right? But like, yeah. if you if you want to if you want to match the nine things, low, it's still pretty easy going. Um, and like this, yeah, this sort of like it was quite controversial. This point about ferals being young, and um, I don't I don't really feel it's like super controversial like as long as there's a nice way for it to still like you know if, if it was going the way that you know according to the law then oh well all feral orcs would have to only be by themselves and they'd never have these interactions with other broods then yeah it wouldn't make much sense but obviously that's not the way they're going to write it so yeah but but, but even feral orcs they, they are born in a group uh yeah, young, and then they they burst out of the ground as feral orcs in a group, still so in a brood, but then so, yeah, they band together in a tribe, maybe uh, different speeds and the stuff, ones, things yeah. like that. Sorry, you, I lost my point then. But the, yeah, sorry, <laughs> they use the name. We use the name the Warborn as well. Yeah, that's that's good to, be, to bring up. Uh, I like that name. So the the, I... the Warborn are both the orcs and the goblins. It's a common name for them. Yeah, so that's kind of your replacement for green skins, if you like, because as I say, they may or may not have green skin. In this <laughs> yeah. Um, but then also, I think that maybe that looks, that's a hint at like how how and why they get get created, as it were. Like they don't just are, is it spores? Is it something to do with like death and deaths on oh. war and things like that? Like yeah. I, I wonder what it is. They're, they're like. like they're literally born from war. That's... Yes. <laughs> and somehow, some way, is that yeah. going to be? part of it i don't know yeah that's in interesting i, I had not thought of that uh, one thing that i've been curious about with the broods is we don't really know the size of these so they are born out of the ground in a group but how large mm. is this group so i yeah. in, in my head i sort of imagine like 20 individuals or something like that 
Yeah, like a like a unit minimum unit size. Like yes, so, so, something like that, and may, maybe it's intended that <laughs> that in the game that it's uh, a single unit is a single brood. Yeah, but, that's but, what I thought. But I'm not sure if that that's intended. It could be smaller, like five or six, uh, or maybe it could be hundreds, uh, so that m many armies are like a single brood or something like that. Uh, don't really get that impression, but maybe. Um, so th that's something that I would really like to, to have a have answered. Um, I've sort of ima imagined it as sort of like 20, so I, I did uh, two, I painted up two sh orc chariots a while ago, and I ima imagined those two to be, uh, all, all four of those are orcs at least to be part of the same brood, so they were painted in a very similar scheme uh, and things like that. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, th those are the broods basically, and, and as I said, each brood has an alpha uh, who leads the brood, and I think those would be the unit champions then. And then the uh, the dominant brood of a tribe, um, the leader of that, the alpha of that, is the is the warlord who leads the the whole tribe instead. Um, and I think that will bring us into the games of Sagan. I was about to say that's a good segue into the yeah. games, isn't it? <laughs> uh, so, like a, a very very important a aspect of the, of the Orcs and Goblins is this constant battle that they have. So the the broods and all of that, it's like a it has been described like a a microcosm of like a um, a selection of the fittest. So within each yeah. bro brood, they're constantly fighting for dominance, and between the broods, broods they are also constantly fighting for dominance and. <clears throat> proving who's strongest and all of that, and the and the culmination of all, all of this is the the games of Sagan, which is a festival. Um, I think it's been mentioned that it's a, an annual festival, so every year they they have this. Um, so the um, it's in the honor of the god Sagan, which is the only god that we really know much about. There's been <clears throat> mention of another god that's called uh, Tasrek. I think it's the ball god, yeah. There's a few gods' names mentioned, which is which is pretty cool. Again, yeah. like um, I wanted to kind of point out, people might be going, oh, you know, I rolling out. Oh, this is not enough detail or whatever. And I'm like, honestly, compared to a lot of orc and goblin lore I've read already, <laughs> like I already quite like how this is going. Like they're, they're obviously thinking it through. Like I really yeah. think. Um, yeah, yeah. Or the, the this whole the background team. this whole thing with the games of Sagan, it's it it hints to a more interesting culture than we'd normally see with the orcs and goblin faction. Yeah. Um, so um, this this festival, the, the, the Sagan is the, the god of challenges, <clears throat> and that's what the festival is all about. It's uh, it's the the time when you can challenge the um, the warlord for dominance of the tribe, and the and all of the different tribes battle for their placement within the or the different brood battle for the broods battle for the different standings and things in within the tribe. Um, so they have a bunch of different games, as it, as it is, that they test strength and uh, cunning and speed and all of that in. Um, the best well-known is the Flight of the Fl Flaming Pig, which we have a <laughs> wonderful little picture of <coughs> on display as well. Um, which, uh, interestingly enough, in enough uh, given that how little... Um, background uh, uh, there is or people think it is we actually have two conflicting uh, tales of what it uh, uh, what this game is about <laughs> um, <laughs> so it, 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 it definitely involves flaming pigs but uh, if it's the purpose to throw them the farthest or if they supposed to cost them a, the most damage um, it's a bit unsure, unsure but they seem to have a lot of fun at least <laughs> Um, that definitely sounds orky. Yeah, and and these the games of Sagan is of, is also a, a supplement game in the Ninth Age that you can play as a completely separate game. Right. Uh, Which I need to thank you for pointing out. Because <laughs> I did not know that existed. <laughs> yeah, uh, I I really need to to try some of those games out out as well. They seem like a lot of fun. It's definitely uh, a kind of beer and pretzels, like have a load yeah. of drinks and just have a silly game with some models. Yeah, I honestly think there's a lot of potential to paint up some cool models for that as well. Yeah, like, I, um, 
uh, I've been thinking about painting up a, a gaming board for it because they, <laughs> it's it's sort of meant to be played at, at a chess chess board, which is a ni nice right. ni nice touch because most people have one of those. I don't, <laughs> so I, <laughs> I, I need to make my own, and then I can might as well make it like a, a themed chess board. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it's a shame that it's uh, it's come out at this time when I've not, you know, not really been able to play any games. So it's kind of yeah. Like, um, but yeah, what maybe one day? I think you need obviously ideally to, if you want to play it with like the correct miniatures, you definitely need a few different orc models, and um, I think you want some boar models. Yeah, uh, some there's one char like chariot race in it as well. Um, right. One. Uh, and I think I need a few goblins as well, but I'm not sure about that. Yeah, if if you if you've got a, like an orcs and goblin army, you'll probably have the majority of things you need to. Yeah. To play it, if you want to play it as a true tabletop experience. Yeah. Um, I I sort of hope that this could be a thing that at tournaments, like a a, a side attraction, when you're finished with your game, and or maybe on the day before, it's gonna be something that people bring out because someone at the tournament is bound to have an orcs and goblin army and they can just yeah. loot their <laughs> loot their army to, for the miniatures you need yeah for a while, along that lines for a while we had a on our local tournaments we had a little thing the night before where everyone would bring a character whatever they wanted up to 500 points not mounted and you just line them up on a board and go at it free for all yeah and that was like a friday night game yeah. Which yeah. Great. Yeah. And, and, and the, the, this this games of Sagan seems like a perfect uh, yeah alternative to that. I'm very interested in using it for exactly that. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's definitely not something to be taken too seriously. It's uh, <laughs> it's mostly kind of like a it would be a great thing and just you know have some dice, have a chat, and just get to know other people sort of thing. That'd be I think the great purpose for it. Yeah. Um. So more about the games of Sagan. I think uh, in the in the lore it's also mentioned that it's, it's a big festival uh, uh, as well, uh, also known as the Festival of the Boar's Heart. Um, so they, they they drink and they eat and they feast for a few days, uh, big celebration. And there, there, it is possible for goblins are are, are around, not in a, in plenty though. It's mo mostly an orc thing, and even sometimes you, humans and elves and things can be. Invited to to uh, participate in the feast, if not in the games. Um, and uh, one, one little detail about this flight of the flaming pigs. So, um, of course, they are fly flaming pigs, and they are uh, coated in a in a uh, salve that they then light on fire. Supposedly, it was, it was first developed to to cook the the pig. Uh, it, it cook it and, and burn all the all of the the fur away in, in, in a single swoop, but for some reason it, it was used on a live pig, <laughs> so it, it and it turned into a game instead. Um, uh, but uh, nowadays they they use the game and they they have the event of of, of the flight of the flaming pigs and then the, the the night after they they feast on 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 the the pigs that didn't survive, and the, and the and the one pig that did did win win it all the the one that did survive, uh, is re rewarded with life and often becomes the the mount for the um, for the warlord. Uh, because his his uh, hide grows back even thicker thicker and. Uh, uh, Courser. So one thing that's uh, sorry, I was going to jump in, but one thing I really like is um, some people have kind of criticised some of the Ninth Age lore and things have been too serious. Um, don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I, I think still, yeah, yeah. They, they 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 have captured that wacky feel a bit with this uh, with some of the of the details in this uh, games of Sagan and. and I mean, I can only assume that they will keep going with that in, in in coming releases. Yeah, from everything I've read, that's definitely the intention. It's like it's there is meant to be some comedic comedic elements in in the yeah. world, and definitely orcs and goblins are one of them. So yeah. I kind of like that. I mean, there's a, the other thing is like the um, if you if you've read a lot about how sort of orcs and Lord of the Rings and, and even D and D and things and like how they came about, there's obviously some problematic kind of stereotypes and cliches there. Um, I, I read some very, very in-depth articles about all of that, um, and 
it was pointing out that one of the best things that Games Workshop did for this actually was slightly moving away from that by adding these comedy elements and yeah. um, the kind of uh, like orcs as a football hooligan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like orcs as a. Uh, and and um, I think the games really enhances that. Like a lot of the little lore snippets and stories and things, it's very much like a, a, a crazy sporting event with with hooligan, you know, hooligan fans and things like that. And um, almost reminds me a little bit of some of the Blood Bowl background in places. Um, yeah. And I think that's I think that's pr- that's pretty cool. Like to to keep it away from any sort of the other other kind of maybe darker ways of looking at things. So I really, I really like that. Basically, that ninth age is keeping that feel. Yeah, yeah, I think it's good. Um, and I, I think they made it very clear that they want to go that direction. Also. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, do we want to talk a little bit more about the goblins? We don't have that much to say about them. Um, no. I... They, they seem the, to they're, they're described as the as the, uh, the smaller cousins of the orcs, so we I think we can assume that a lot of what applies to the goblins uh, to the orcs also applies to the goblins. Um, the, the skin color does at least. Maybe also the the, the brood situ- situation, but we don't know that. The way the way they're born out of the dirt. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, I mean, I like them being related to orcs because in some of the worlds obviously like orcs and goblins are kind of separate factions even yeah and i, I like keeping them together and if you're going to keep them together like keep keep the keep that link there in the lore as well rather than just being like these just some random unrelated races yeah. that just happen to fight together it's like well that's a bit rubbish so you know like yeah. um i like them keeping some strong links there there's some hints in some of the lore snippets that um the goblins seem a bit more mystic like they've got like yeah they, they are they are sneaky and, and and all of that too. um and untrustworthy whereas uh, the orcs are pretty straightforward hmm. yeah but they seem to have some slightly different beliefs as well like they've got like some um magical city that they believe in it's almost yeah, like goblin right. heaven basically and things yeah. like that and that, that's kind of interesting and very different to the orcs. Uh, and they have background. some 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 profit related to that as well so they don't they yeah. seem to have a bit of a different religious um structure um so that's uh, good related but different i think is the strongest way to do it yeah uh, interested to see where they go with that um definitely um we have some mention about that they they often <clears throat> the oxy goblins are fo- found like everywhere in the world in, in where there there's w- the wild regions as they say, say so forests and caves and stuff um but the goblins often often have these large lairs on the ground that are filled with the co- strange traps and monsters um that no one really understands <laughs> um and uh, one small note about the, the warborn is that the, the dread elves seem to have a strange interest in them they're both interested in, in the way that the, the goblins seem to command these monsters in in their lairs uh thinking that their beast monsters could could learn a thing or two from them <laughs> and they're they're also thinking that maybe the the warborn or the orcs at least could be tamed uh as they are just like beasts um so I think the intro in the games of Sagan is written from the point of view of a beast master who, is, who has been exploring this uh, possibility of, of taming the orcs. Um, Never. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I, I think your conclusion what was that it's uh, possible but dangerous, <laughs> something like that. Um, so I think that's that's gonna do it for the background. Uh, unless you have anything more you wanna add. No, I don't think so. I mean, how do you feel, Gene, about this uh, sort of younger orcs or feral orcs kind of thing? Because it seems to be quite a controversial topic. I guess a lot of people are like really kind of married to particular backgrounds that they've read in the past. Yeah, I mean, it's it's different. We and it needs to be separate. It needs to be a different background than what yeah. we're used to in the past, and I'm okay yes. with it. I just don't. Um, I hadn't heard the part you said about the uh, orcs. They're not progressing along. It's not just age based. Yeah, 
when they bounce from one thing to the other. Um, yeah. It also makes the idea of tribes a little different. I don't know how they're going to work that out. If if you've got a brood that's born and you've got whatever it is, 40 feral orcs, how are they, how, a sudden, how all of a sudden are they now hooking up with the common orcs or the iron orcs later on? Yeah. So, it, anyway. Especially if they're right. popping up out of the dirt. I thought, it, when I heard it, I just thought it was just going to be kind of a natural progression at a certain point you get feral orcs and you have, then they switch into common orcs then they switch and then basically the iron orcs are the oldest survivors in your tribe yeah that are hanging around but there's constantly a renewal inside the tribe not requiring an outside tribe to join you so that's the only thing i'm not sure how they're going to work out but yeah yeah i'm sure they thought about it yeah i um, uh, I, I think so but it's um we don't really know all that yet, that much yet. <laughs> so uh, we're looking forward to 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 uh, see more. I guess that's the conclusion. Correct. I'm glad they're doing more fluff. So yeah, we'll go with that for sure. <laughs> okay. Uh, so with that out of the way, let's uh, move on to some rules. I think. Um, so we do this in, in the the faction focus episodes. We do a, do a, a good. Uh, bad and gem pick so we'll go go through uh, each of us and uh, each do uh, a pick for these three different categories um, starting with the good and I think we'll start with uh, Eugene you have a pick of something that's exceptionally good in the Ox Goblin army that you never leave home without you mean as, as like an item or something or yeah, a, an, an item a unit uh, or, oh, okay. a, or maybe even a particular build of a of a character or something like that. If you've seen my videos, my my warlord build, I cannot leave without. <laughs> yeah. I cannot get off that build. <laughs> so that's my that's my one. It's the uh, feral orc with the arm, the essence of mithril to give him the two up armor and a five up war. You know, five up. Um, uh, hey, Aegis save. Yeah, t- talisman um, of shielding. And I love the uh, no, yeah, feral orc, so he doesn't have to. Oh yeah, so it. he has that base. Yeah, that base, yeah, that's right. Yeah, and also throws him the, you know, also gives him the battle focus. Yeah, which is which is great. And then people love the the uh, orc apocalypse weapon. I'm a big fan of the shady shankin. Yeah, me too. Um, and then you throw the troll ale flask on that, and you know, last item is either a magic rock or a. Uh, Magic rock or a potion of swiftness, just to give him a chance to go before something. Yeah. So that's my favorite model that I cannot get rid of. Yeah. Whether he's I... on a boar or on foot. Yeah. And he's mostly on a boar. <laughs> so he can leave whatever unit he's in and walk off on his own and get killed. But, um, yeah, that, that's the model I can't get rid of. That's for, As far as good goes, yeah, he's in almost every list I do. Yeah, yeah, I I feel pretty much the same way. I I have a the, the Shady Shikens is a favorite for me as well. Uh, it's it's a great item. Um, so if I if I use a Warlord, that's often something um quite similar that I take. Um, so moving on to you, Remy, do you have a pick? Um, so, uh, well, obviously I have to preface this, as I mentioned earlier, like I haven't really played a game of Ninth Age yet, I've only played the previous Quick Starter and obviously I'm very involved with Essence of War, so um, I can't really pick it from a purely, like, strength of balance, you know, things. I do yeah. see, like, I look at, I've looked at tournament lists and things that people take, so I've got a good idea from that, but I'll, I'll pick something from my point of view that I really enjoyed, which was Iron Orcs, so yeah. um, partly because... Uh, like I, I used to way 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 back a long long time ago when i was a kid like i had an army and i think they were the, the games were actually, uh, like one of the fancy battle fourth edition they were called black Orcs then and they had like they had really low armor basically it was kind of one of the problems was i, I wanted this elite unit of orcs to kind of be my centerpiece of my army if you like but generally speaking they got shot to pieces in every game <laughs> <laughs> like, because they had the weak the worst defense actually from shooting of any unit in the army which was kind of weird it's like, yeah. well, why would they wear less armor than the other orcs, right? And it seemed to make more sense. So I loved when I when I discovered Ninth Age and read about Iron Orcs, I was like, oh, brilliant. So 
I was very, very happy with that, that they made um, elite orcs with these, um, with like lots of armor and actually quite tough to kill. So it quite, you know, they're still not the toughest unit around, I know that. But um, yeah, but they come yeah. with with uh, plate armor and shield base. Wait, so yeah. so, so shoot, shooting us, it, it, they have a three up armor against, and that that's pretty good actually. Resilience four, it's not bad at all. Um, yeah. it's obviously it's still going to be the it, the point is they've shifted from being one of the worst armors to being one of the best from what I, from my perspective. So I'm really happy about that. And I also love the um, the weapon master rule. And yeah. again, this is not purely as a from a perspective of a power gaming or trying to make the best tournament list, it's more like I just find it really fun rule from a modeling point of view because you yep. suddenly don't need to worry about how you want to model your guys. <laughs> you can you can do them with you know paired weapons or great weapons or yeah. whatever you want to use on them, and I just look I love that rule from that point of view. Yeah, as a like also a bonus. There's a big bonus with that too if you do a unit of them, which you'll you know if you build a unit of the iron orcs, you'll see. You need that mix because you need that one guy with the great weapon all over his hand, so the other guys can fit in together. <laughs> yeah, the the G Games Workshop Black Orcs models they are tricky to to rank up <laughs> to say the least. They don't want to rank up. <laughs> I I've had that, that issue. All, all of my mine are, are numbered, but uh, and they all only go together in that way. <laughs> So. I managed all right, so I did. I did exact. I discovered this. This was last year discovery for me. So I was finally getting to paint my my full iron orc, iron orc unit. I'd always had in my imagination since I was a child. <laughs> so <laughs> it was really fun to finally paint them. And uh, but I had some some really old metal um sort of old citadel miniatures and things like that. So I had a, a wide mix of different models. Um, so I had I had advantages there, like they weren't all the same shape and stance and things like that. And some of them were a little bit smaller, so I could I could kind of fudge them all together. I haven't had to number them; it's not quite that bad, but it's close. <laughs> but there are there are certain models that have to stand next to certain other models. Yeah. Um, and I also wanted to plan it so that character models can drop into the unit and have a way <laughs> to rank up as well without disrupting the unit. So it did take a lot of thought. <laughs> yeah. Which is. Uh, I, I, some, it's such an interesting thing about rank and file miniatures games, actually, that people yeah. don't really think about a lot of the time. Um, that's that's true. <laughs> my my iron rocks, I I did not consider putting characters in, uh, because when I <laughs> built them, uh, I didn't do that. I didn't put characters in in the unit, and uh, it's tricky to say the least. <laughs> uh, and that's that's one of the issues I have with the current uh, um, build for the uh, rules for the for the iron rocks that they they have bodyguard. Yeah, which is a right. great rule, of course. Yeah, but it's sort of feel compelled to put a character in there, and I don't really want to all the time. <laughs> so that that sort of annoys me a little bit. Um, yeah, I need to number mine. Yeah, so, they, so I know how they fit together, rather than between each game trying to squeeze them back in where they go. Yeah, uh, I, I took a lot of photos when I was. Um modeling them <laughs> to, to see how they could fit on the movement tray and then i made like loads of different i took basically a bunch of photos of it, just so if i ever need a re to reference of how they can fit back together i've got those photographs <laughs> that's great yeah, yeah i've got i've actually got him uh, he will be an iron orc battle standard bearer one day he's uh he's just in the gray plastic right now but he he, he's, he we had to be glued together <laughs> even though i didn't want to paint him yet just to make sure he could fit in with the other models you see so, planning ahead. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Uh, so, um, on that topic, uh, I, I want to ask Eugene: Do when you use Iron Orcs, do you usually put a character in them? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I have been putting a BSB. Now that I've gone kind of away from my boar units, um, I've been putting a, a Iron Orc on foot in there. Yeah, it's such a stub stubborn is so great. Yeah, it, it really is. Um, I mean, that's I, the unit you can throw into the woods um, and not have to worry about losing steadfast. It's really nice. You, you use the ranger standard on them? Oh no, no, your your no. your your bodyguard, of course. So you don't yeah. care. <laughs> yeah, the bodyguard. I just walk into. The woods. I, 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 when you said that, I had a bad bad reaction though because one of the games I played against Sylvan Elves, I charged through a wood and lost like half the unit to Dana Strain. Yeah. So I, I, Iron Oaks and Woods don't go together in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll scar you. <laughs> uh, so for my own pick. Uh, I think I'm gonna go do 
two picks, um, but it will be pretty pretty fast. I, I I'm the host, I can cheat. Um, so I'm gonna pick uh, Crown of the Cavern King, the goblin item that gives you an 18 inch bubble. Right. I I always struggle not to put this item in the list uh, because it's. It's just so good to have. I use a goblin in in, in the back ranks in a bunker and an 18 inch bubble, and that's it's so safe. It's so comfortable to always have that uh, in the back. I've tried using a, a few different builds, like you said, a, a, a BSB in the Iron Rock unit, and I've also tried uh, the uh, Great Green Idol as a BSB. But to me, the best option seems to be the goblin, um, and and I think. The item is a bit, it's a bit too good even. Um, I, anyway, I, I think <laughs> it's very high priced because you, it gives you, I would love to see them take away the Vanguard part of that and lower the price a bit. Yeah, maybe. That, that that's... the unit that I have that guy in, whether he's my, you know, my Warlord or my, uh, or my BSP, I, I definitely don't want it Vanguarding up forward away from my army. <laughs> yeah, uh, the, the, there is some tricks to that, and uh, uh, I think it's mostly used with uh, Mad Get shenanigans. Correct. Uh, so you, you, you vanguard it, and you move the character out of the unit into your other goblin bunker, and then you vanguard the unit, the, the main unit, up uh, into the face Got of the it. enemy and, and uh, launch the Mad Gets. Right. And, and that's, I think it's priced, that, that does add a bit to the price because that's a gimmicky that, that makes more sense i have not seen that done yeah <laughs> I, I had some etc players explain to me how that works so um okay. and i and i use it uh, though not really in the correct way but i i do use it to to move the him out of the, un the unit and the move the un unit forward if i do have two co cave goblin units which i do sometimes mm. um but yeah uh it, it's a great item uh, maybe too great uh they could solve it by making it a bit worse and a bit um, cheaper, perhaps. Um, so, and the other item I want to mention is the skull fetish, which I feel pretty much the same, same about. Uh, so, this item gives you an extra uh, veil token for every uh, unit you have in, in close combat, and you lose one for every unit you have that is fleeing, and it. it cannot remove tokens from your pool and it um, in total and uh, it can max add three tokens right i love the thought of that item yeah I, but i have actually never played with it it's expensive and it takes the hereditary slot i mean the uh indeed I, I i i i made this pick with some reluctance because i too never play with it really uh, because okay. I, there's, there's always some other item that I want more, but it, whenever I play with it, it's it's just insane how good it is. If you can fit it, it's incredible. Right. Because the turns you want a strong magic phase are the ones that are in combat, and then you mm -hmm. automatically get a, a, a flood of fail tokens. Uh, so that's that's great, and I and I do like the the idea of the item. Um, it does motivate you to go into combat, and, and go into combat at several places at once. Um, which is good. It, it it enhances the Oxygoblin play, but it's it seems a little bit too good, I think. It sounds like it um, synergizes very nicely with Warcry as well. Yeah. To enable yeah, it, you to get like the combats off at the same yeah. turn, and then yeah. One thing I will say about our army book, I mean the Orphan Goblin army book, is <laughs> the special items in here are almost all very good. I agree. Um, the pan of protection pension, forty points. That's fantastic. Yeah, I love it. And the ale flask. Yeah. You know, anyway, there, you can go through the whole list. They're all. The only one I'm not a big fan of is the uh, the bow. Yeah, the sapin bow. I have used that to some. It's uses there, right? Yeah, I, I used it at a, t at a team tournament once. Uh, I, I teamed up with an a silver life player. And I put mm -hmm. it, I put it on a goblin in a, in a big unit of uh, orcs with bows, <laughs> and they ran around pretending to be, to be elves. They had a b banner of speed and mo and quick to fire, so they, they pretended yeah. to be elves. <laughs> That's pretty funny. I like that. Uh, but uh, it, it's not great. It, it's it's okay <laughs> for some builds. Like, um, there's a good combo with um, forest goblins, 
characters, I believe, with that item. Yeah, because you, you have poison on, on the, your shooting attacks. That's true. Yeah, which normal forest goblins don't, but forest goblin characters do, if I remember correctly. Yes, that's true. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, I I run often run a, a forest goblin king on a, uh, huntsman spider, and I always take the bow on him because he has that um, that uh, poison, <laughs> which is always funny when he shoots at, at some great big monster and. Rolls at six. It, uh, it, it's uh, so satisfying. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think that's gonna do it for the good. Um, we'll move move on to uh, the bad, and uh, continue the uh, the circle we have established. So, uh, Jean, you go first. I I'm gonna cheat and do what you did. I'm gonna take two. All right. So, yeah. The wrecking team. Oh. I, again, I like the thought of it. I used to play them all the time, but everyone's got a piece of chaff that costs less than it does. Um, <laughs> so, therefore, it's, yeah, just goes away. And then the other one, of course, is the Nasher Dashers. Yeah, the Nasher Dashers were on, on my list as well. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I have some backups. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but, but. Um, I, I want to contest you a little bit on the on, on the wrecking team. I use it okay. use them all the time, really? and okay. it, it is true that they 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 do go down to the chef units, but mm -hmm. then you get rid you at least get rid get rid of the chef, which is nice. <laughs> uh, but yeah, but it, you're, you're paying more. For yeah, it, even though it's chef. cheaper, but it's it's a surefire way to get rid of the chef without them actually doing the chef job and and blocking up your units. Well, I'll give you the other part of that too. Is I. I find myself using my my dispel dice to protect it and letting him do something else. Because yeah. you can't let a magic missile go off because that'll drop the thing. Yeah, but then they are not uh, magic missile or something else off. Uh, I when I use them, I, it's always in a in a target saturation army with like yeah. a wyvern and uh, giants and th things like that. When I have lots of use of targets and. Uh, then I, I push these forward, and the opponent has to focus on them. If they don't, they're gonna do a mess. <laughs> they're gonna wreck his. They're yeah. Do what their name implies. Yes, yeah. indeed. Because yeah. if they are very, very weak, but if they do make contact, they do hurt. So. Correct. So, but those were mine. Yeah, and and I I agree that the it, it they are in some matchups they are just wasted. <laughs> and 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 against good players they are almost almost always always a waste um right. but i but i i really lo love them still <laughs> so um can't let you bash on them too much too much <laughs> right. yeah i was gonna add about that actually there was a, there was a recent thread on the ninth age forum about um like what people thought should be changed in the balance assuming there's going to be a balance patch this year which i believe there will be some yeah small i think, patch, so. I think small so too. changes at least um I know with COVID and things like that, there's not been the same amount of uh, tournaments and events for them to use data from, but hopefully there'll be something. But like, it was it was very interesting how there's very little agreement from Orcs and Goblins players about which are like definitively, you so often get completely opposite views exactly like you two just did. Right. Yeah. Like the same unit that someone thinks is completely overpowered or that someone else is absolutely terrible. Like it, it's very interesting <laughs> how little agreement there is. Yeah. And I do think that like orcs and goblins, one of the things I've always enjoyed about them as an army is that there's so much variety like in that army and yeah. so many ways to build it. And I do like you said, it all depends on other things in that list of like does that unit then work? And even the strategy you're playing and maybe even the mission and things like that. Yeah, that you, you've got like whether they'll work well or not. So um, uh, the um... yeah, I think that's that's true. Um, yeah, maybe we lost uh, Remy again, uh, but we'll t we'll keep talking about the the Nasher Dashers. Night Goblin, Cave Goblin units. Sorry. Oh, you're back. Okay. Uh, oh hi. You you were gone a, a little while. Like... Bit again. I was, I was, <laughs> sorry. Which, where did you? What did you last hear? Um, <laughs> I missed your whole thing after you got past the variety, the great variety. Yeah. Oh, the great variety of stuff. Okay. Great, well, just, yeah. just saying that, like, it really depends on how you build, right? Um, the army as to what units will seem to work and what won't. 
and even um, perhaps down to the mission you get in that battle and things like that. Yeah. And your overall strategy. Um, and I was trying to remember the name of the cave goblin uh, berserker guys that come out of the unit. Yeah, the mad gits. The mad gits. That's it. I've got a mad git radio. I should remember. This <laughs> but yeah, the, the mad gits. Like they, they, they were one of the they were one of the other units, just like. You do you too with wrecking teams that some people were saying they're fantastic and some people were saying they're trash. And yeah. it's like there so. seems to be no very little middle ground, although I'm sure there actually is. It's just the people that don't say anything. <laughs> That's per usual on a I forum. Don't, I don't use them, but I don't think they're trash. I think they're a good model. Yeah. But the, I got to tell you, though, the, the that's one of the rules to simplify our army book that I would like to see maybe go away which is going to cause a big, huge revolt, I know. Yeah. So, uh, the uh, whole uh, random movement thing. Yeah. I, uh, I'm i guilty as charged for having written those rules, I can say. Okay. Uh, and I'm, I'm actually a bit proud of them, because I know they are complex, but uh, at least when I look back to where they came from, they are a lot simpler now than they were at the start of Ninth Age. They are. Um, and they, have, they cover... A, a, the situation is fairly good uh, too. So much stuff, but it's a full page of rules. Yeah, it is. Something um, that's like a couple mad gets in the wrecking yeah. team. Uh, and that's an issue. And I would actually be very, very open to doing a complete re revamp of the, those units and simplify them a lot. I would even be fine with with rebasing them. I have uh, six mad gets and two wrecking teams, um, okay. and I mean, if if I have to re rebase them for to have some simpler rules. I'm all for it. Right. Yeah, I mean, if we have to, if during the revamp of the whole um, Orc and Goblin army, there's things that have to be given up to do some other things, to me, yeah. that's the first target. Yeah, definitely. Um, but uh, I do think, I will say, the way they're written is very good, but, I mean, like I said, it's a full page. If you, if yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I understand completely. It's, it's uh, definitely the, the first place to trim some fat. That's for yeah. sure. It's definitely one of the things I've struggled with because, um, again, coming from a sort of new new player, almost starting point, um, some of the interactions because you've kind of got to understand the random movement rules from the yeah. real book, from yeah. the full book as well. And I was like, I'm not 100 percent sure how this works. And I definitely, <laughs> when I when I first play a game of Ninth Age, that'll be one of my uh, questions to ask experienced <laughs> players of like, Can I just go through this like outside of battle and just make sure I understand this because I really like. It's the stand and shoot, like the interaction with stand and shoot that particularly. Yeah, yeah, that that me. is it's also a bit tricky. Is uh, that something new to me? Like long ago, like last time I played, and they were kind of like, they were a bit, they were really like you say, even more complicated. It's like the entire yeah. game just like paused, and then you had to work <laughs> out what happened with these, the mad gits, and then the game restart resumed. It was just crazy, like how yeah. it used to work. Well, the before it was, they just as soon as you got within certain range of them, I think it was eight inches, they just triggered. There was no yeah. static reaction. Yeah. They just triggered, um, which in one way was a little bit simpler. Yeah, it, um, it was course, only a single trigger, and it was very, it is, it was yeah. instant. So the moment you moved in, it was very, very much easier to remember, I think, uh, because it was so just within eight inches, it, they trigger. That's it. Yeah. But then the, all the interactions they had were more <laughs> yeah. complex than today. Exactly. After that, it got madness. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Madness for mad gits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, no, I, I definitely agree with you, with Eugene as well. That it would be very nice to simplify some of that. Um, um, shall I jump into my bad pick then? Uh, I think I wanted to mention the the the, the Nasher Dashers a little bit. I wanted to to explore oh, sure. expand on those a little bit. You want to uh, use the Nasher Dashers? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> I, I, as you said, uh, uh, Remy, that, that that there are many different units that can have their uses. I have not seen anyone use Nasher Dashers in ages. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a unit painted up. I want to use it. <laughs> I, I have one too. I I love the models, but I, I have not seen them used. They yeah, they. The only thing they got going for them is fly, I think. The impact hits are what they have that is what you're trying to get out of them. Yeah, but the, then the, the, the chariots do, do that better. Yeah. Uh, and and I, think, I think the impact hits are a mistake on them, to be fair. Um, I think it, yeah, it I clutters them. They should be 
they have two strength five attacks that uh, now that fly and that should be enough to to have us have a place right. for them. They shouldn't have Not to compete. Com yeah, they shouldn't have to compete with the with the chariots for that um, uh, for the impact hits. Uh, I, I think. Agree. I find so, impact hits a strange rule all around anyway, but particularly on a model like that, it seems really strange. I, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I love it though on the on the uh, uh, cave nasher. That's wonderful. <laughs> but uh, that, that's <laughs> a completely yeah. yeah. That's that's so nice. But uh, if it has to go on, the, on that too, I'm willing to pay that price. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, but that's that, that's that. Uh, moving on to yeah. your pick for the bad, Remy. Yes, again, uh, this is not one I can swear that it's not useful in the tournament or whatever, but <laughs> but um, again, it's it's partly what I've seen other people complain about, and, and just from looking at the numbers in the book, that yep. seems a bit weak to me, which is the big wing upgrade on the Wyvern. <laughs> um, yeah. And it particularly annoys me because um, the, the the Wyvern base in Ninth Age is only a 50mm base, yep. which is crazy small. Yep. Right? <laughs> like, yep. For a big model, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I know that historically there's been some very small wyvern models, but like the modern models for wyverns that are really nice, and I want to use them. Like I have put them on fifty-fifty bases, right? <laughs> and um, I think my favorite reaction, I think it was Little Joe or someone said that like he spat his drink out when he saw what I'd done to fit it on the base because it's like <laughs> it's literally got like its two front legs on the base, and then it's like its entire hindquarters and tail are just like off the base. <laughs> If you don't look at the back, it looks yeah. fine, okay? And it's yeah, well. <laughs> now that you mention it, I've seen that model, and it it, it looks yeah. quite funny. <laughs> it's like standing. It's the Mantic um, Orc Ridger on Slasher yeah. model, which is a great Wyvern model. Like, yeah. Um, yeah, I, 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 I agree with that. I, I was... I was advocating um, during my time in the, in the team to switch the, 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 um, the base of the Wyvern completely to a Chariot base, the 50 times 100. And yeah, I think that'd that... be fine. Or 75, 75. Like, anything yeah, just bigger, anything. Than, bigger than what it is. Um, it's like... And I have one, one uh, Wyvern model, and I, I would have to rebase that one. Uh, but I, I would gladly do it, because <laughs> this one actually fits on the base fairly well. It's, it has a very small footprint. It's the old old uh, um, Fell Beast model from uh, uh, Lord of the Rings. So it's, it's standing oh, no. on its tail. Uh, I've even got a very old 50 Oh, base yeah. One. <laughs> That's mine. That's the one I own. That's the one you got, yeah. Um, was it Marauder Miniatures, I think? Anyway, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the problem with my, min my miniature is that it's it's uh, uh, metal, so it's so front-heavy that it tip, tips over all the time. Uh, so I, I just want more base in front of him <laughs> to, to balance it better. <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, yeah. It, it's... Um, it would be great to see um, an update on those um, on the big wing to allow more models to, to use. Um, I, I think it's something that Ninth Edge has to be a bit better at. There are so many models out there, and they, they should try to accommodate more of them. I think. Yeah, so, and you can argue that they have accommodated it with the option for the big wing. The problem is, yeah. the option for the big wing is so terrible. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and and that that's the case in a lot a lot of places, and and I think they're doing better. With the the new armies that are they are releasing, so the, the Hope Harvester and things like that in the Demon Legions has this base option, and and the uh, Thresh uh, Legion, uh, uh, Threshing Chariot I think it's called, um, which has a le Legion Thresher option and another option, um, so you can do different sizes of it, and and I think they are fairly balanced balanced all of them, and and I think right. that that's a a good. Uh, direct direction, direction uh, to explore. Yeah, that sounds good. I mean, it, I, I mean, I do, I do like feel for the um, designers and balance team who have to work with this so, because there's, there seems to be such a violent, um, violent, maybe not <laughs> physical violence. I don't know. <laughs> vocally violent, at least. Um, yeah. Response to anything that requires someone to change a base size. Yeah. Yeah. And. I mean, I don't personally feel that at all. Like, I, I don't like I, what I've done with my models right now is I've always tried to fit them on the smallest base possible. Um, but then I've got like optional magnets and things like that, so I can put them onto bigger bases when I want to, and things like that. Like, I, I mean, I think if you're if your base is getting bigger, right, I don't really see a big deal. Like, if you were changing 
round bases and square bases and making them smaller and all this kind of stuff, like I could more understand it. If you're just making a base bigger, surely it's pretty easy just to like stick the base on another base. Yeah. Like I, I don't know. Like uh, people obviously don't feel that way. Yeah, it's it's a very touchy subject. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, Good way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> well, no one. Will, I mean, the whole war uh, war machines. Yeah, that debate. I, I that, that was a huge debate. And still, I yeah. so much wish that we we would switch to square bases. Square so bases right. for life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't uh, mind. Again, I've I've kind of kept my war machines on smaller bases that can fit on top of a circular base if necessary yeah. and things like that. So I can use them in different games as well as as well as Ninth Age. Yeah. Right. So that's my solution to everything these days. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, yeah. The, 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 the whole game is built around squares. Yes. You know, squares and yeah. rectangles, and now yeah. we've got circle war machines, which cause problems for the overrun stuff anyway yeah yeah i mean i think the rules sort of solve the problem any of the problems pretty well it's yeah, just that they, it's they extra work complexity, but it's but... it's extra complexity as i say right. um okay we shouldn't let this uh, dive right. down that this rabbit hole no that it's my fault um, make the big win better. Uh, maybe we should, should 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 make an episode about square bases, some that, uh, square <laughs> yeah. bases on 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 the uh, war machines and all of that some other day. But uh, about yeah. the big wing, um, can you fill me in on what it does? Because I can't remem remember. Remember. You get you get like. Yeah, go on. No, I'll let you. You brought it's yours. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I'm not certain. I think it's plus one wounds, maybe, and you get a big. Obviously, you get the bigger base size, um, which I think is seventy five by seventy five. Yeah. So strength and AP. Oh wow. Okay. That's what it gives you. It's only ten points. I mean, it's not a you know. strength and AP, but it, it, so it's strength seven then. Yes. That's not pretty cool. I would play that. Yeah. <laughs> but but then again, a, a bigger base is a downside, so no one wants yeah, to. Yeah, we go from a fifty-fifty to a seventy-five one hundred. So. Yeah, that's a big base then suddenly. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I understand why. Even if it was free, people probably wouldn't take it. No, as a, as a competitive player. Yeah, that's that's is true. The issue. Right. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's much harder to hide that wyvern if he's uh, <laughs> on a much bigger base. Yeah, for sure. And and hiding the wyvern is a is a game we all like to play. Correct. <laughs> I've, not, I've not used one yet, so I'm not <laughs> this. Um, well, but... that's good. For four turns, you stay in the back. <laughs> okay. You move out on turn five and you attack something on the final turn. That's how it's simple. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Why would 101? Gotcha. It's, should we have the Wyvern versus Wyvern debate? Oh, that's, that's too, too <laughs> often. No? Okay, we'll move on. <laughs> I wasn't even aware that there was a debate. But okay. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll leave it at that. Um, so, uh, I guess that leaves... Um, uh, for uh, my bad pick, and uh, uh, I said I, that I had a list, and that, now I look at it, I, I will have one more item, and now I'm a bit unsure about it uh, uh, because I, I've written down the Great Green Idol, and uh, you just said that the, all the good players say say that this is such a good, good item that you had to pink one up. <laughs> exactly, I'm, I'm telling you. Yeah. Um, two month two months ago, I would have been a hundred percent with you. <laughs> okay, so I, I'll I'll try to make my case. I I've tried this in two games because I won't try it out, and I think it, it worked decently in my army because I I, I often play Oxygen Goblins now these days with uh, like a lot of target saturation, so giants and uh, a wyvern and working teams and all that, right. and it fits right in with a BSB upgrade. It sol solves the the bunker problem. I can play without having a bunker that way. Mm -hmm. Um. But I, I can never see myself taking this without the BSP upgrade. And even with the BSP upgrade, he's mostly as the BSP that's walk around, walking around and is in the way. Um, so please tell me, what, what do the, the, the brilliant minds use this model for? <laughs> because I, I don't see it. It's toughness 8 with 6 wounds. That's what it comes down to. And it's a single model, so it's incredibly yeah. maneuverable. It's very maneuverable, toughness 8, 6 wounds. Okay. That's what I keep hearing. Okay. <laughs> I will I will report back to you after a couple games playing it when I finally get one into my list. <laughs> I 
think it's one of those uh, models that causes kind of matchup problems. Like certain lists will struggle to have any answer to, like actually getting rid of it effectively. Um, and I do see it in, like you said, the kind of target saturation list where they've got a lot of other monsters. So I'll use like there's um. I think the highest there's a it's one of the many many UB tournaments. Like because I'm not playing any of them, I find it hard to follow them. But I do listen to some Ninth Age podcasts and things, and they just, just talk about the lists. And I think the one of the highest ranked Orc and Goblins lists in a, one of the UK UB tournaments does have two Great Green Idols in it. Um, and one is a like you said with the uh, Battle Standard Bearer upgrade, and one is a standard a normal one. But then I think there's also Gargantula uh, and things like that. So it, it, there's a lot of like very fast, and I think there's a large unit of Boar Boys as well. Um, and the, the the sort of Warlord on a Boar Boy so, on a on a Boar. So it's um, Again, it's a lot of fast, like dangerous, hard to remove targets, and it, it's just kind of adding to that, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's nice to have something. I mean, you've got that unit of cav that if your giant spider's out there, they actually have a decent shot at wounding it. But you throw this thing, they're not going to get through it. Yeah, I guess that's true. It's anyway, uh, that's it, what it, I keep hearing. It's a, bit, a great big rock tank. Now, combine that with the old rules before you fixed them for the wrecking team, where you could go through just the enemy unit in combat. <laughs> yeah, and this thing would be fantastic. Though it doesn't it's was it resilient? It's resilience eight, right? Yes. So the wrecking team is wounding it on sixes. So Correct. He's it, it, gonna soak up some of the damage that yeah. would go on the the enemy, but it's, he's not gonna die from it. At least not Correct. in. That well, much, yeah, yeah. Dice. If you're, if you're an orc and goblin player, the dice usually go with the sixes. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's true. Uh, okay, so moving on to the gem picks. Do you have one, Gene? So this is this is something that that you think is really good, but perhaps not that considered that good in general. Oh. Oh, okay. I was going a different route. Um, uh, go, go ahead with the whatever route you had. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, it's fine. The other one, it's kind of a the gym. I just saw the gym and went with that. Um, yep. The gym, of course, is the uh, for me is the cave goblin hero on the Nasher. Oh, yeah. I don't yeah. think it's underappreciated because I think everyone loves it. Yeah. I think it's underpriced because it's a fantastic. Piece. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, I like it too. I, I seldom you... find find the points for it. Um, but when I do, I, I always quite enjoy them. In, in the well, that's one of the things the better players have told me as well. <laughs> By shifting your BSB out of your character points, yeah, you open up character points for this, something yeah. like this, and now you've got two of these things. That's two of these things hit a unit. That's sixteen straight six hits on the first yeah. round for they... three hundred points. It's ridiculous. Yeah, they hurt and they fly. <laughs> and they fly. They don't fly very far, but they fly. Oh, but they do fly. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so that would, that's kind of my gem in the whole the thing. Yeah. Do you usually uh, use random, like, naked? Or just with oh, com even land. mundane items? They have to have the lance, yeah. And that, that's, yeah. that's pretty much it. Yeah, okay. Uh, I, I, I quite like tooling up my characters. I often run it with, like, a 5-up Aegis or uh, something like that. Um, now I have done, which I've loved, is um, put the uh, pan of protect protection pension on one of them. Yeah, and then run into a unit of cav, and you've got a two up armor. Yeah, <laughs> that, yeah, the, the the pan is a wonderful, wonderful item. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, it, it's kind of it, it, the pan is kind of factor into my my gem pick. Okay. <laughs> so, so but that's, but, my, that's my gem. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, so moving on to Remy. Yeah, difficult for me to say again, but I've yeah. got a couple of thoughts about this. One, one is in the old Quick Starter. This is more of a joke, but the the old um, Ed Vash's unit in the Quick Starter rules um, was incredibly good, like ridiculous. It kicked out like eighteen offensive skill five, strength five, AP two hits, like attacks rather. <laughs> but like that might not sound like much in the terms of like the full battle fantasy battles, right? But in in terms of the quick starter, this unit was redonkulous. Like there's very very little that could actually stand a chance. Like maybe on a charge, if some of the cavalry units could could probably 
probably win a round of combat against it, but hardly anything else could. But it meant that the other units in that quick start list were like really, really trash. And it became like a all your eggs in one basket list. Which when you've only got three units, I really didn't like it. Um and it wasn't it wasn't purely down to me. <laughs> like I was I was kind of moaning about this from before I joined the, the quick starter team anyway. But um we have sort of do we are doing a bit of a rebalance on all those um essence, now they're called Essence of War patrols, which are like the pre made like three units in a character lists basically that each army has. And we are actually we are actually not going to have an Ed Basher unit that's quite so powerful as that okay? because it was it just kind of skewed the whole list basically. So um, and and again, it's kind of not so much fun for either player to have that one sort of super powerful unit on the battlefield, really. Um, yeah. So yeah, so that would have been my sort of gem, but also a tarnished gem because I didn't really like using them. But it was kind of fun. You just be like, all right, who's going to take these on then? Nobody. <laughs> it's like push them forward. <laughs> there you go. Uh, they're going to have the objective, and you ain't going to get them off it. Uh, I mean, you get them in the flank and stuff. But you know, yeah. it, it was still really good. Um, the other, the other gem, just because I, it's always been one of my favourite units, and I'm, they're actually not that great, but I, but I kind of love them. Is 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 wolf? I mean, the go goblin raiders, but goblin wolf raiders specifically. I really, really love wolf models, and I want to paint loads more of them. And I'm almost a bit. One of my small sadnesses about the way the rules work in the ninth age is that they are essentially always relegated to a chaff roll these days. Um, I used to build like a really big combat block of um, Goblin Wolf Riders, and they could be a ranked up unit and actually like do some damage that way and, and put a bunch of characters in there. And um, there, there is someone on the forum who does use a big block of Wolf Riders, but they're essentially like... Uh, uh, he describes them as ablative armor for his characters. <laughs> yeah, I've I seen it used as a mobile character bunker. Yeah, exactly I've that. I've tried that um, for a while. Yeah, and I yeah. thought that I got I got confused actually. I thought that was you at one point, Madat, but I apologize. <laughs> it wasn't you. Uh, was it Squeak Kicker? I think it's Scargrit Loon King or something. They, they've got a common okay. goblin avatar anyway, <laughs> and they love common goblins. Okay, I, I, I know that, that, that Squeak Kicker is a uh, he's a lo local in the in the Swedish scene, and I know he, he used an army like that for a while. It, it sounds cool, but I'm still a bit it's a bit of a shame. But I still I still like them. I still love loads of models. I still think they're a cool idea, like having this super fast moving, like unit that can. And I know now the way that the chaff works and things, I can I don't fully understand it all because I've not played it yet. But I know that it's still like quite a useful tool to have. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 18 inch movement's fantastic. That's, yeah. Just With light troops, yeah. Now, well, I wish there was you, a combat unit equivalent. I would love to the option to give up fast, give up light troops and become a ranked unit. Yeah. You yeah. Know, be able to gain ranks. And yeah. Maybe gain scoring as well. Because yeah. I, don't, I don't even care about score. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've got to tell you, in, in the old game, in, Back when I used to play GW's game, I built a Wolf Rider army. I've got 92 Wolf Riders. <laughs> That's cool. So I need a rule to let me use these. <laughs> that would be, yeah. See, I want to make that army. <laughs> and I've got about 20-something of them now, and I've got so many models that I want to paint. And it's it's not very motivating when I realistically I've got the all the wolf riders I would ever really need for ninth age right, right. <laughs> with like twenty two right, yeah. or something, um, and it's a bit of a shame because I just wish there was some more uses for them. But maybe they don't want that. They don't want um, orcs and goblins to be like a cavalry force. But I doubt it will be strong, right? I mean, they're still goblins. No, <laughs> yeah, no, it would be trash. Weapon skill too. It's trash. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. They're they're not. They shouldn't. They should be fine. It's it just it just be another interesting option. I think the point yep. of scoring is mostly for people that. So this is again, I guess this is one of the ideas for the full book that's been described, and maybe in the future that maybe your um, who you take as your general, like what what brood they are, like that will determine some special rules for your army, and maybe if you have like a goblin. Uh, like uh, chieftain, I can't remember. Yeah. Uh, like the goblin general warlord. character. What is it? Still a warlord the, for goblin? The, the goblin king. Goblin oh, king, of course. Oh, How yeah. can we forget that? I'm sorry. <laughs> um, with his with his big crown on his head, like it, it, then then you'd get more options on your wolf riders or something like that. So you could have like additional rules that way. Um, yeah. Which I think well, would be pretty interesting. Well, maybe a, a maybe a, a goblin, maybe so. a su supplement army. That could be awesome. Correct. 
yeah, yeah, it could be that yeah. as well. So I, if you want, yeah. I wonder if there's a, even a, a supplement army on the, on its way that could suit you very well. <laughs> uh, oh God, yes. <laughs> um, Interesting. So we'll we'll see uh, a few mo m months from now, now perhaps. Uh, but I, I probably shouldn't be talking about that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we'll leave it at that. Um, yeah. What was uh, your first pick? Was was Ed Bashers? So um, Ed Bashers in the old Quick Star. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 think, I think I think I I want us to to touch upon the Ed Bashers a little bit because they have been one of the cornerstones of the Oaks Goblin Army. I don't know if they are anymore. But, so. Yeah. The feral orc Ed Bashers. Right. Are they still the hotness? I mean, Ed Bashers in general are going to be one of your core units almost always. Yeah. I mean, it's a really good core unit. Yeah, it is. I, I always use a, a block of com common, uh, not, not always, but of, often use a block of common orc Ed Bashers. I have recently gone from ferals to commons. Okay. And you, 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 I, I've had it explained to me that I'm an idiot for using common orcs. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, why did you make the switch? I guess is my question. Um, just fluff. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> go differently. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, and I don't have, I don't have my feral orcs. My feral orcs, Ed Bash, my feral orcs, the only feral orcs I have. None of them are modeled with spears. Oh, and and that's the the way you want to go with that basher. And, and I think feral orc ed bashers with spears are fantastic. Yeah, uh, I, I guess it's the most expensive way you can build them, but they do correct. They do put out a lot of hurt. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you don't have to buy the uh, green tide for them that way. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> so. um, I I have a unit of of fifteen um, ed, uh, feral orcs. That's all I have in the Feral Orc department on, on foot. Um, and sometimes I, I run them as a, an Ed Basher block, and they're pretty fun that way. Um, right. A small un unit that, that it, it, even though it's so small, it does put out a lot of hurt. Right. Um, so, all right. Uh, my gem pick uh, is going to be my, my Shaman on Vyvern. I'm really mad at <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Uh, that that's that's uh, uh, my favorite build that I I, of, I often use this. The, the two last games I played with Oxen Goblins have been with this, um, and I, I I just love it. I mean, I'm not gonna pretend it's great um, <laughs> because it isn't. He he does become very vulnerable, but you can always hide him behind a hill if it's, there's too much too much heat on the on the table. As I said, why weren't oh, one, great one green one. idol, by the way? Yes, that is actually one of the reasons I do include a great, great green idol. I can hide the vibe behind him. <laughs> also, also have a, a big brother, brother, a big brother giant for the same purpose. Okay. Uh, but my, my build for this dude is uh, a fairlord, fairlord shaman on Wyvern, because frenzy and uh, wizards on Wyvern is a great combo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Just, okay. to, <laughs> just to make this even worse. No, but it, it's it, it, he gets the five up ages from it, which is nice, and he gets an extra uh, battle focus from it too. Yeah, just don't let anything get near you. Yes, um, <laughs> and uh, and then I stick him with uh, um, the shady, shady shankins on the pirate weapons. Okay. Uh, that gives him three attacks with battle focus. Should give him four. No, three. Sorry, Shady Shankin doesn't give you a plus attack. Yeah. Uh, okay. With li li lightning reflexes and le lethal strike and reels to hit, uh, reels to wound in, in challenges. Uh, and then I gave him the pan of protection, protection pinch in. <laughs> um, and I often run him with the uh, uh, medical heirloom as well. Uh, but if, if you have other good wizards in the army, you don't, don't really need that. Um, you can yeah. put, put. Shamanism? Yeah, shamanism, of course. Okay. So uh, uh, on uh, if you get a spell through the en enemy is wounding him on a five up in clo uh, close combat, uh, which is great, um, and you have a lot of spells to shut down uh, war machines and things like that too. Uh, the Totemic summon is always a fa favorite, um, and he's a bit of a character assassin. He can charge into both uh, like uh, cowboys hate him. Uh, <laughs> with this one trick, yeah. <laughs> Cowboys hate him. 
uh, because the, the, uh, they they have um, um, the car- cowboys they have good saves like two up armor often uh, and you just nick that from them and then you hit back with little strike and ignore it so I, I've charged him into uh, great uh, great rats monstrous rats of the vermin swarm uh, with the, who have like one two up armor and four up fortitude just take his save and ignore it, 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 little strike his away um, last game I charged him into a unit of um, possessed with a de- demonic symbiote in uh, which is a very nasty character uh, and uh, I challenged him and he declined so I, I, I still hit him and killed him um, and then I was unfortunately killed by the possessed after two rounds uh, but it, I did get to charge in and, and do a cool thing. Uh, so I was happy with that. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, o- overall it's it's a build I really like. He's, um, he's fun and he's decent, I say. And I've actually, I actually seen <clears throat> a few other people run uh, a similar build at least. Too. So I'm not totally alone in thinking it, it's okay. Well, I might, I might model one just to give it a try one day. Yeah. And I've actually got a, a feral oak sort of shaman model that I could, that will fit on my one of my wyvern models. So maybe yeah. I'll uh, fancy yeah. magnetize him so he can sit on different I, things. I, I'm, I'm, I'm super happy with the model I have for him as well. Uh, I, I mentioned the, the wyvern; it's the the uh, old metal uh, fell beast, Lord of the Rings wyvern. And I have put the old Versag model on top, um, so the, the boar mounted one, and I gave gave him a, a different mask. I used the uh, Savage Orc uh, standard bearer top as a face mask, and then I, uh, I I started playing this guy in in eighth edition uh, or even seventh, seventh edition even, and I, I used the item uh, Bigot's kicking boots on him. Oh yes. Uh, so I, I have modeled that uh, him to have a pair of boots in his hands <laughs> that he backs around and kills people with. <laughs> <laughs> so so that's that's the origin of him. He, he's had many different it- iterations throughout the game, uh, throughout the ed- editions. But I, I still find him really enjoyable to play with. Interesting thought. Um, you do that with the shaman master. Yes, you you have to be have oh, to be have a to, yeah. you have oh, to be a master to too. Wyvern, don't you? Oh yes. So uh, many points. Yes, it's it's a lot of points and very very susceptible to shooting and all of that. Exactly. But uh, in a target saturation list, it works they, because they have yeah. to focus on the on, on the mad mad gits and then uh, and giants and all of that. Uh, so yeah, um, okay. It's uh, I, I as I said, I'm not pretending it's a great pick. I'm <laughs> saying it's a fun and decent pick. Okay. So that that's a gem for me. That's like my first target, no matter what else you have. <laughs> Not only am I killing your wyvern, I'm also. <laughs> hey, I also have a have a whistling hat guy on a spider. Oh, there you go. That'll make up for it. <laughs> that first level spell will carry you for the rest of the game. You're safe. <laughs> oh, way too many games. I I I had to rely on him and a goblin apprentice. <laughs> <laughs> now the other one no one mentioned is the. The common goblin on a chariot, which you pay like what a twenty point upgrade to put a goblin on a chariot. Yeah, the 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 witch witch doctor chariot. That's doctor. that's a funny pick. Yeah, it is. I, I've I, I've run a, run a list where I had three wizards and all of them were on stupid stupid mounts. <laughs> so a wyvern, a chariot, and a huntsman spider, um, and it, it's so much fun. <laughs> One other thing I want your opinion on, if you don't mind. Yeah. Trolls. Oh, yeah, that's... Um... What's your opinion on trolls? <laughs> I, I, I think they're good. Um, they, they are tough. Uh, I, I run them as, uh, as the cave troll upgrade. So they are resilient, resilient to magic and have a good armor, mm-hmm. uh, which is cool. Um, the problem is that they, they have to be, be uh, babysat. They have to have the general and BSP close, and that it just messes up my army line too much. I I tried them a few times and it, 
they always just destroy the army plan. I can't do what mm -hmm. I want because I have to babysit them. Okay, that's my opinion as well. I think they're fantastic. I like the models. I, I mean, I love the models. I like the way they work in the game as far as the way they fight, everything else, but you win a combat, you can't overrun. Yeah. Your general has to stay close. He can't fight something and overrun. Um, anyway, other than that, they're really good. And you can't put a model with them because it can be singled out. Yeah. Because it's not on the same base. Now, if they had a... I don't know if you have an in with whoever's designing this new edition. <laughs> Either an orc or a goblin upgrade that puts them on a 40 millimeter base. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> I, I, I'm 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 hoping for a, a special character supplement with a troll character. That's, Correct. That that a, a, a prefer, preferably a troll wizard. I think that would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah. st still, a troll is fairly tanky, of course. Uh, so, but, but uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's neither here nor there. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, is there any other unit that we want to pick on or or? or pick on <laughs> or, or want to mention or anything uh, we've covered pretty much most of them yeah again again uh, you do see a lot of these units though because like even in tournament lists like you see trolls and you see common orc at uh, common orcs even though like yeah in, in common orc head bashes even though like the sort of perceived wisdom is these aren't necessarily the strongest picks but they generally all have some advantage to them like I know yeah. for people saying that trolls are often again they're one of those units that some armies like really struggle to deal with. They can actually be very strong depending on who who the matchups you get. And um, again with common orcs, people, they've been able to flee, and uh, yeah. feral orcs cannot. Like that can actually really save you a lot of the time. If you remember that you are actually able to flee, that's not the orc. <laughs> yeah. That's not the orky way. So I don't. Not the orky way. But yeah, I think part of that is uh, Orcs and Goblins player, I think they are quite generally a bit fluffy. So they don't want to... They, they want to keep doing what they're doing. And, and if they have Feral Orcs, they prefer Feral Orcs and they they use that instead. And things like that. Um, but but I, still, there is some tr truth that I think the, the book is quite well balanced. You can write decent lists with most of the units. Yeah. Um, yeah. So... It's it's pretty pretty good, um, but yeah, uh, let's move on to the miniatures, <clears throat> the last mm. section of the of the talk, of the rambling. Um, and uh, should we start with, with uh, Remy now? You uh, <laughs> been a, a bit of a disadvantage in the in the rules department, <laughs> not having played the game. But uh, I know you have some great insight on in this section. Yeah, well, I, I do, I, as I said, I help out with the product support team as well, and um, I, I'm pretty much every week I will do some updates to the miniature library for Orc and Goblins, because I'll find some new ones, <laughs> or there's just new ones being released, or yeah. there's, I've got, I've got lists of stuff that, like, hasn't been fully <laughs> listed there yet. So the other day, like, and also because I've been a bit out of touch with the hobby, like, some of them, so someone brought up, like, uh, we mentioned Lord of the Rings earlier, someone mentioned all the Lord of the Rings models, and I was like, Oh, right, I hadn't really thought about that. Like, so um, I didn't really know what was out there because it all came out, like, when I haven't been gaming. So I actually went through the entire site and I've added, like, all... Well, not every, every single one because some of them don't really fit in what the Ninth Age is looking for. But, the, again, depending on how you want your orcs to look, um, Lord of the Rings models, for example, um, pretty fine for the Ninth Age, mm. right? Yeah. So uh, there's, and there's tons and tons of... Uh, pretty cool models out there it might not be you know your preference for aesthetics and things like that um but yeah it was it was very interesting to see how many there were i was absolutely blown away um so like and a load of troll models and things like that as well um so that was really cool i mean i mean the orc can go again orc and goblin list has got so much variety right and there's so many different units and there's so many models for so many of those units um you've got you've just got a vast array of choice like generally speaking the, the, the only the only issue that comes up is sometimes if you want to build because it's because it tends to be a big 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 foot big number of models army right like it's it's a bit of a horde army um if you've got and you want to like get plastics models for that reason because you want you know cost effective rank and file models 
Um, and also, the one of the advantages of plastic models is obviously they're very easy to convert. And if you want to make every model into some kind of unique pose, it's a lot easier to do that with plastic than if you've got like metal models, yeah. resin casts. Which I mean, you, you can obviously you can and, and I do convert them sometimes, but it's a lot more work, especially if you're doing it like every single guy in a unit or something like that. Yeah. Um, and certain models, certain units aren't particularly well served with plastics. Um, goblins now are actually. So one of the um, issues was kind of like, and it depend again depending on how you want to, if you want to get into to the different uh, kind of not really races now, but I think they're still called races. But maybe we're going to change that terminology for for like uh, cave goblins, common goblins, forest goblins. Yeah. Um, Shield Wolf brought out this like amazing forest goblin Kickstarter. Which I jumped in on. I was like, I'm having that. So, um, and and they're really, really nice forest goblins. So you've you've got a great option for that. And they're one of the ninth latest point companies. So, yeah, good job, Shield Wolf. And they do the uh, really cool plastic feral orcs, as I say. And actually, the parts fit very nicely, it, converting between them with with the GW parts. So I was really, I'm almost sure that they were specifically designed to do that in some places. Yeah, because they they fit so nicely. I, um, I the the those orcs I, I wanted to touch a, a bit upon if you hadn't brought them up which I uh, pretty much assumed you would <laughs> I would have brought, brought them up uh, but uh, um, I've I've been looking at, at that range quite a lot because I I quite like the look of those orcs but yeah. there's I, I, there's one detail about them that I know puts off a lot of people and that's their faces yeah. Yeah, and uh, I, 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 I I like looked at them for a long time before I figured out what it was that was different about them, and they they don't have lips. <laughs> no, <laughs> they they look like cro- crocodiles or something like that, uh, yeah, which yeah. Uh, when I when I looked at them first I, I thought this looks wrong I can't figure out but when I realized what was missing I actually started quite quite like the look of it. Uh, so if I, I, quite, I quite like it so yeah I, I mixed them in so again um. And if I were to to make an, an, an a new orcs and goblin army today, it's not gonna happen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but if I were, I would probably go all in on the uh, on the shield wolf orcs because that look is so unique but so cool. I think. So that's just my little pick. You found that it, yeah, they, yeah. they mix quite nice with the, or really nice with the orcs and goblin uh, the, the games workshop. Does yeah, that... the the savage oryx or whatever they call them these days. Yeah. Um, do, do, does yeah, that like, they, they... include the faces? Do you th- do you think yeah. it makes up? Yeah, yeah, easily. So I've I've done head swaps on a lot of them. Um, I mean, you need to do a bit of converting, right? So you've got like a plastic stalk that like on the necks that the, the heads join to, and they're not obviously not exactly molded for each other. Um, but I actually found even with the shield wolf ones, you're better off doing a little bit of modelling to like make the heads pose a bit nicer anyway. Because I found their heads were like kind of too jutting out from the body, and I actually wanted to trim down those head stalks to kind of make their like neck be more, you know, a smaller neck basically. Um, yeah. So because I was, I mean, you're doing a lot of that anyway, and and some of the um, shoulder joins, they they do kind of, they both have a kind of um, V join. It's not a flat join, right? It's a bit of a V V join. Yeah. Um, and depending on how you want to pose the arms like sometimes that doesn't work too well but i've just found a bit of load of green stuff around the shoulders and things and it's generally looking quite quite good and by using and and chopping off different hands and weapons and things like they they really mix like really really well and you get way more options than you would with just one of these sprues right you've, yeah you've got, that's, that's you've true. already got like lots and lots of options um i know the shield wolf sprue the thing that i kind of criticized it for was about the amount of weapons you had um, you can basically only make paired weapons and spears, or they kind of look. Maybe you could. They, maybe they look a bit like uh, like great weapons actually, <laughs> which obviously you can't equip them with in, in Ninth <laughs> Age. But you know, they, the way they hold the spears is almost like a great weapon with like time two hands. Um, but again, you can do a bit of modeling. It all depends on whether you, whether you're up for that. I know. I know you're a very talented like uh, converter and painter yourself. So you, you'd have. I'm sure you'd have no no problems doing it but even just doing a few arm swaps and head swaps like i'm sure anyone could do that like yeah they, they, they do that, that, that's nicely. that's reassuring because then maybe i could expand my, my feral orc section of the army with a kit of that and just swap the heads because i, I don't want to mix the heads in with my army i think but uh, right the, the rest of it sounds perfect 
I mean, you will have a you will have an issue with number of heads, of course, like because you can't. You can't yeah, get I, 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 I have I, I have tons but... of hand of heads lying around from all the different orcs kits. Um, I mean, I went I went a bit crazy with the head swaps. I've got some from um, some from really ancient Warhammer Forty Thousand orc head on one of them, even and like uh, nice. yeah. I, I, the other thing that's cool with the the shield wolf heads though, the jaws are like separate pieces, so you can pose oh, the oh. mouth how you like. Nice. So on a lot of the ones that you see painted online, I kind of didn't like them because they were like these massive gaping maws. But it's like you can actually close them like fine, and they look. Yeah. I think. Look, I mean, I like some to be like howling, you know. But I was like, I don't want every orc with this like, <laughs> like one or two you can keep the trap shut. <laughs> So yeah, like I, I had some fun with that as well. And again, the the amount of posing you can do on these, if you, especially if you, as I say, if you go to go for a little bit of work on the shoulder joins, um, and they they just they mix together really nicely. They're just the, the similar aesthetics, but a little bit different, as you say. Yeah. Um, I was going to mention earlier that like, on goblin models, so we got we got shield wolf ones for the forest goblins. GW still do a range that's very appropriate for cave goblins, obviously. Um, and although you need you need bases, <laughs> you're going to need different bases for Nightmage. Age. <laughs> um, and then you've also got um, the uh, the new Mantic goblins. They look really really nice. I haven't got any of them yet. Yeah, they, they like, are, I've got uh, too many models. Stop buying models. <laughs> <laughs> I think that they are only available in a, like a starter kit so far. They're about yeah, to be released they, uh, in in a they will be released, separate yeah. kit pretty soon, I think. Yeah, yeah. And th those look really so, nice. Yeah, the start. I mean, the start kick is, is kit is really good value to be honest. Even if you don't want to play Kings of War, because yeah. you get a ton of uh, rat, they call ratkin. So yeah, I'm I'm thinking it's... about getting some, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> but I I I, I, I was surprised. I'm in the same boat, I don't need more miniatures right now. Uh, yeah, I was but... like, no, wait, wait, wait. Um, okay, so th that's um, an extensive pick. Uh, let's uh, <laughs> hear what Gene has Sorry. to say. I was <laughs> no. just going on a general ramble there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's fine. Uh, well, yeah, you caught mine. I mean, Shield Wolf. The Shield Wolf Forest Goblins are what I'm looking at. Really want to get into. I like those a lot. Uh, yeah, I think they're fantastic. Even I even like the big monster thing they have, the Bruck Goth or whatever it's called. Yeah. Um, yeah. I actually considered using the Orc version of that as my Great Green Idol. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, I th but, think maybe it could be used as a, a Gargantula as well. Easily. And yeah, I. Easily person I, I don't I, I, I... oh there it is Does, is the howder removable <laughs> yes yes the howder is separate see that's what I was thinking about pulling that off and using it um, as my great green idol nice I like that model it will it will fit um, pretty well the goblin version will fit okay on um, it would fit okay, fine on a great green guide also size base 100 100 um, it will also fit okay on a gargantula base. It does look a little bit small for a gargantula base, maybe. Okay. But the orc one's bigger, so the orc one, yeah, might, might look even cooler. Model. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah, but I like those. I like the shield wolf model. The other thing to look at for goblin infantry, if you like the Lord of the Rings look, um, there's a company Oathmark has yeah. brown goblins, um, and those look good. If you again, they're kind of armored, so. They only kind of work for common goblins, but they're a little too armored for my taste. But anyway, it's a cheap way to get a lot of infantry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I bought a couple of packs of the Oathmark just to give them a try because like, they've got the the Wolf Rider pack especially is incredibly good value. I think you get sixteen Wolf Riders or something in the box. It's, you get a lot. Like it's it's, it's like wow, <laughs> that's a ton. Yeah, um... I gotta stay away from buying Wolf Riders. <laughs> yeah, you do. You've already got it over there. And again, like I, I want to meddle with my computer, and I'm probably going to use them for like weapon swaps and arm swaps and things like that. Just getting the parts was like really cool. Um, so yeah, yeah, I like the look of them. The wolves I didn't like, if I recall. The wolves looked a little too smooth or something. They yes. Uh, <laughs> oh, <there's> a, <laughs> a smooth oh, oh, wolves. Well, that's a mention a blog I wrote for. Yeah, I wrote. There's a there's a, an orc and goblin um, model site called Collecting Green. And I, I wrote a couple of articles for him because uh, we, were, we were chatting all about models, and so yeah, I said oh, I'll help you out with some right. And I did a kind of review of like all the wolf models I had. So and it's the, I reviewed the Oathmark ones, and I can see what you're saying totally. Um, I do quite. I think they're all right though. They look pretty cool. Okay. But 
they the way they uh, the main issue with them is their two piece got wolf models that just like stick together so you've got a big kind of like uh, groove line down the middle of them which looks pretty ugly and you've got to do quite a bit of green stuff in to like really get rid of that um that was more my problem with them than the than this but they have they are very smooth and they only have like tufty like fur around certain joins right um depends how you want to paint them really like i i kind of do a very rough dry brushing and and, and then washing over the top to do wolf fur <laughs> i'm very into this <laughs> i'll shut up now <laughs> moving swiftly on i'll tell well, you all about maybe, wolf fur later. maybe you can answer one other question for me then have you seen the um mantic boar riders i have but i haven't got any so it depends what okay. you want to know <laughs> I, I haven't I've seen all I've seen is the box and I haven't seen them in person so I just wondering how they look do they fit all the the thing with all the mantic orcs um I'm not a fan of their orc style I really like their goblin style and I really like some of their resin models it's like I love their their wyvern model but the only the only thing I have with their orcs is they have very small heads and arms yeah, Sorry, they, they, but it was specifically hands and, yeah, they, they look a lot like green humans i think they they, are, yeah. they don't really have a different type of build than humans so, mm. i think which I, i'm not too fond of they have a bit of they have a lot of hunch to them actually um but i i just i had something about them again it, it depends on people's taste like you said some yeah. people really don't like the shield wolf like head design some people do um i i quite i quite like it and i don't think it mesh, it meshes too badly with other Feral orcs specifically, um, but yeah, like the Mantic ones. Yeah, I just I wasn't. It just wasn't the style I wanted, unfortunately. But that is an option. Again, that's another big plastic kit that's that's out there. If you want to do it cheaply, they are very very well priced. So, um, and I've got yeah. I've got an all wolf rider army. I needed a boar rider army. <laughs> Full boar rider army, right? Yeah, because the, 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 those are are actually scoring. So. Exactly. <laughs> you know, that, see, that's a valid option, and the head basher ones are great. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, that's it for me. I I, I want to bring up, up another goblin option, and that's Win Windmaster miniatures. Um, they have a, a, a faction called Jeepas, uh, Y Y E, um something <laughs> jeepas i always say yappers but yeah, yeah, yappers, yappers. Right. <laughs> i i your your the native lang language guy here i i have no idea what i'm talking about <laughs> uh so yappers is probably the the right way to say it um and they they have some really cheap goblins i think it's what it is 20 mo models for 20 euro uh so that that's a nice price resin cost uh quite simple design really uh but they get the job done i think um yeah I, i've been saying if i were to again redo an orcs and goblin army i would go with chill wolf orcs and probably the jeppas from uh, windmaster they look uh, pretty good as a uh, cave goblin style as well because they're not heavily armored are they and i think they've got yeah some they, and... they have a, yeah. a cloaked uh, cloaked and they have they, they have a whole range the the jeppas the range these are the uh Yepas night watcher regiment i'm talking about too um but they have like a lot of nasher options wrecking teams and uh nasher da nasher dashers and cave nashers um that you can also get from them to have a more consistency um so i think they are definitely a company worth looking into if you're starting out on Ox Ox Goblin army or if you want to expand yeah, yeah. <laughs> um definitely i might i might get them eventually yeah, uh, I mean, I think the boars. Hmm, again, it's depending on the style of boar you want. There's also I, I created the page for like just boars, boar mounts by themselves. Like, so there's obviously a lot of nice boar models you can buy if you're going to do a conversion and you want to put maybe a character model and things like that. There's a lot of individual kind of nice boar models. So you do have to watch out for the scale sometimes. Yeah. Um, some of them are really big <laughs> and aren't going <laughs> to fit nicely on a cavalry base. Um. That sounds like a challenge. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, the other the other new models I have, um, they were on Kickstarter only, but they are now available um, for normal purchase, which is a company called First Legion. If I remember correctly, they're Russian. Apologies if I'm making a mistake there. 
Uh, these are resin cast, and they've got um, like a there was a big set of goblins. They're still all in the bags. I haven't even got them out yet because I only got them a couple of weeks ago. So um, although they claim this resin doesn't need washing, interestingly oh, enough, it sounds like you should prob it's... probably wash it wa wash it anyway. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm, I'm going to wash one and paint. Oh, I'm See how it works. But they have That's... some nice, uh, some nice wolf riding goblins and some some foot goblins. Probably not enough designs to really make um, like a full unit. That's this is the problem with a lot of these smaller ranges. Yeah. There's loads of loads of cool goblin models, but are they at a price where you want to buy hundreds of them? Like, and uh, maybe not. Um, but for some characters and things, and they also do some. Um, they did some orcs as well, but like, again, the style was more. Um, they were very big. And they were more almost, I guess, what would it be, the World of Warcraft kind of style of orcs. So again, that may or may not be your thing. Um, mm. but certainly worth a look at. But again, more character models than, than units. They also did some giants. And I've, got, I've got one here. but um, And they're really nice resin again, but they are quite small. So I'm, I'm, in, I'm intrigued what to use them as. And I was like, well, I can probably just about get away with them as giants. But... On the on the kind of it's on a giant base, I know you can't see it very well, but um, yeah, they they're a little bit small, so I'm I'm wondering what to use them as. If you've got any ideas, trolls maybe. <laughs> trolls, yeah. Yeah, trolls was maybe, but they're, they're sort of in between. They're a little bit bigger than I'd yeah. want trolls to be, but they're not quite as big as I'd like giants to be. So I'm pondering <laughs> that one. They're very nice models yeah. though. <laughs> maybe, um, so yeah, first legion, another another one to look at. Um, the new new models that have come out. Um, and there's been a couple of like uh, I'm trying to think new ones in the last few weeks. Um, there was there's been a, uh, they're uh, actually intended for Dungeon Dragons. I I think there's one fairly fairly new model that we could mention, which is the Games Workshop uh, giant, the uh, oh, right. Sons of Behemoth. <laughs> I mean that that big boy looks cool. Yeah, big giant. <laughs> um, I I'm thinking about getting one to convert to, to into another uh, um, net big brother um, giant because I, I enjoy playing with the, I have one uh, already but uh, I want another <laughs> uh, I wasn't keen on the design I don't like the design of any of their giants to be fair so I, I, I'm, I'm, anything new. I'm not super keen on, on the faces and stuff like that so I, I would probably convert convert it uh, quite heavily maybe do some head head swaps though i'm i've run out of, of heads from the uh, other world giant um <laughs> so right. i don't know what I, I i'd use but something else uh speaking of giants we can also mention the mantic giant if you want a really cheap one because the games workshop one is quite expensive um but it's if you look as well yeah, but I think they're pretty much the same size, these two, uh, the, the Mantic and the Games Workshop. Um, they, they are very much comparable in size. And and the, the Mantic Giant is like a third of the price, I think. Um, and it's perfectly fine. It comes with a, a club option and a, uh, like a Shoppa and the and the uh, shield option, but I'm not sure what you're gonna use it as, but, but the club is perfectly fine. And I converted mine to be a, a net giant, but that was quite a tricky conversion that I wouldn't wanna <laughs> wish upon any, anyone else to try on an attempt. It t took a lot, of, a lot of time, um, but it's it's a cool model. It is. Yeah, there's so many options. I mean, like, this, yeah. I mean, it, no, it, I'm, joking. I'm not joking. Like every week, I will add something to those miniatures. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't doubt you. It's uh, <laughs> there's tons of models for this or this army out there, um, for sure. Um... Also, oh, actually, meant sorry. We're gonna jump back to Shield Wolf. Something you reminded me of. The uh, you said you if you like your um, Cave Nasher uh, hero goblin. Yes. Um, I I don't have any of those at the moment, but I do have the Sheer Wolf uh, War Toad Riders. So and they fit really nicely on forty mil bases. So yeah. I'm going to use it. I'm actually going to probably use it as a as a. I know it look. It's going to look like a forest goblin, but it's going to be a cave goblin <laughs> Asher if necessary. Yeah, I have yeah. three of the cave goblins already. Or I would. <laughs> or I would have oh, bought the frog. Yeah, the frogs are really nice models. It's almost a shame that there's not more you can use them for, because like, but you've still got options. That's the main thing. Right. Yeah, I think you could get get away with using them as trolls. I think. 
That's, that's uh, yeah. Or just unit fillers for, for, for yeah. forest goblins. That's true. Right. Always an option with some of these bigger models that yeah. don't quite U fit. Unit fillers are always on, and, and the Augustine goblins are, are really an army that uh, does it well. Uh, you can always sneak in weird stuff in the unit. Too. <laughs> Doesn't look too out of place. No. That's actually one of the things I enjoy, again, like mixing and matching different ranges and things like that, because I kind of like a very rabbly, you know, inconsistent look to my army. I don't yeah. want them to look like super regimented. Yeah, force, I, 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 again, if I if I were to redo a <laughs> Oxen Goblins, I could definitely go for that look and try just mix everything because if you do that, you can use anything. Um, yeah. th th if you do go har hard on one type of aesthetic, you do lock yourself down, uh, making it much difficult, diff more difficult to add like a few elements that are a bit are a bit different. But if you just go nuts, then anything mm. goes. Yeah. So probably that... probably the hardest unit if you, if you don't like um, Lord of the Rings and you don't like Mantic, common common orcs are are a struggle right now. Hmm. So any any of you supporting companies out there want to make some common <laughs> orcs, that'd be great. <laughs> I think I think um, didn't Shield War, I mean sorry Oathmark do those as well? Uh, they're coming. Okay. They're not out yet. They're not out yet. Okay. Um, they've they've announced they were going to do orcs, but. Again, I think they're going to be very more of a Lord of the Rings style. Okay. I think um, I saw they had some female orcs in their unit. I think. Oh wow! You've maybe had a me on this one, yeah. <laughs> I, I seem to remember yeah. uh, some company doing a, a lot, a, planning to do do a, a plastic sprue with orcs, and I seem to recall there being female orcs in that unit, which sounds cool. <laughs> um. Okay. There's still tons of models. Like, don't get me wrong. There's yeah. tons and tons of common <laughs> models. It's just if you want to, you know, if you want plastic sprues and you want a lot of them, it is a little bit tricky right now. Yeah. It's one I, sort uh, of probably the most difficult unit of anything in the Orcs and Goblins if you're starting a new army. Yeah. Um, I I can agree with that. It's it seems quite limited. But um, yeah. Um, okay. Do we have any other picks? Um, I think I have one more I can mention, uh, which is uh, Avatars of War. They do a lot of cool character models. Character models, fantastic. Uh, I I I think I will get their uh, uh, Goblin King someday, uh, because it, it's just such a cool model. It's it's a goblin with a crown. <laughs> what more do you What more do you want? <laughs> that one's cool. They do they do like a really uh, like chubby goblin as well. Yeah. A really fat guy. Yeah, I've seen, uh, I've se 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 seen that used uh, a few times. Um, it's uh, quite popular, I think, and uh, really cool, cool model as well. And they have some some orc characters, some really, really uh, beaty <laughs> orcs, <laughs> lots of muscles, yeah. and uh, yeah, um, I they have look their cool. orc shaman. Oh, the, the the one with the with the cowl and the hand outstretched. Uh, Correct. Yeah. 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 yeah I do too. <laughs> <laughs> Popular model. He's uh, a dude. Um, I I have an o old uh, against worship shaman uh, on foot for that, but um, it's a really good option. Um, okay. The, so I've got to put another company I have to mention. Actually, it just reminded me. Um, nightmare miniatures. Um, oh all, yes, that's a good pick. <laughs> they're all they're all metal, so they're yes. all a bit pricey. And I was very very lucky and have won a Facebook contest and got a bunch of free cash off them. Oh, so uh, <laughs> so that th 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 that's a good tip. <laughs> Go and win a Facebook win, con contest. Win a Facebook contest, and you'll have forty euros to spend. <laughs> on. So I, I got some. Uh, they they chariots. I got the uh, a bunch of a few goblin chariots and a few a few more goblin wolf riders because of course I did. Um, <laughs> even though as, as I mentioned, didn't really need them. But they had some really cool models, and uh, yeah, their, their chariots are very, very nice. They, they have a, big, a big... Yeah, they have a very, very old school style, I think. Yeah. Yes, they do. They really fit. So a lot of them, uh, if you know Kev, Ad Kev Adams, the Goblin Master, as he used to be called, um, he actually runs his own website now as well, Goblin Master. <laughs> so you can you can you can get his models like direct from him. But he's also done lots and lots of sculpts for lots of other companies over the years. And some of his sculpts are now owned by Nightmare. So yes, that's why they have that old school 
uh, 80s almost 80s 90s uh, Citadel miniatures kind of aesthetic um, because they're designed by the same guy <laughs> so yeah who would have thought it's, it's, <laughs> it's yeah again his own models because the Goblin Master models are, are, are he's only done a handful right now he's done a a scrap wagon and he's done which looks really ridiculous it's ridiculous it's got like a um, <laughs> It's called I can't remember the full name of it, but it's got it's got like a dwarf like uh, tied up and all the snotlings are kind of like torturing him <laughs> as they push this thing. It's just so funny model, but it's not quite my taste, admittedly. But it is hilarious, and he's done some really strange. I can't remember what they call them. Some but they, they would they'd be in ninth age. You'd probably use them for Nasher dashes that are really cool and wha like wacky faces on them again. But again, <laughs> talked about maybe Nasher dashes were a bit better. Never mind. <laughs> um, but yeah, so but then but then nightmare seriously they have a lot of nice models. Um, even some they are all metal, so that may or may not be what you're after, and they are all pretty expensive for that reason. But they are really highly detailed along, you know, close to say Miss or um, or Avatars of War kind yeah. of the detail, and then the style is yeah, it, it is a style I really like. I must admit, um, they're actually their Iron Orcs, very cool as well. Don't need them, unfortunately. They came out too late for me because I've already got my, my big squad done. But like, they, they, I might mix them in one day because they're a very different style, but they are very, very nice. Yeah. Um, one other one that's that I had to resist because you're not going to use them as orcs and goblins is the Titan Forge Orc and Goblin Undead Army. Yeah. Ooh. They're orcs and goblins, <laughs> but they don't work in our army. Yeah, that's that's also a cool cool army. Yeah. That's very true. Anyway. <laughs> um, yeah they're interesting you, I mean you could use them um, yeah I definitely mean... elements of it um, <laughs> and you could do a, like a whole you could do an army of them you, to use as, as Vampire Covenant but you could also just do an army of it undead orcs and yeah, run it as orcs I, I guess <laughs> so. one army and do both yeah the, ba true. the bases are going to be an issue for that <laughs> but uh, good point yeah <laughs> Uh, but uh, in some clever method, probably you can make that happen as well. <laughs> um, I think I I want to mention one more company that that I uh, reminded of uh, with the mention of the uh, nightmare. So this uh, I want to mention the warmongers uh, miniatures. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, they have a whole range of like uh, Landsknecht uh, orcs, so they have like puffy sleeves and all of that. <laughs> Maybe not the best for an Oxen Goblin army. Uh, I've seen and used it as Sylvan Elves, and uh, I used them myself in the, my Empire army, uh, Stone Shell. Um, and uh, I, I love them. Uh, but if you go all in, you could definitely do an Ar Oxen Goblin army with them. They oh, yeah, also they, they have some. They have some really weird models as well. Yeah, they, they have some really cool. Uh, like troll models that are really big 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 <laughs> uh <laughs> extra big no uh but that would do they, they mix very well with the old uh, uh cave troll models by, from games workshop or the stone trolls they were called um and you could use these as giants and, and keep in theme with the troll look um, you can, there's some that you can use at, as war machines as well. There's like one, one big troll that's throwing a goblin on a glider. <laughs> right. Yeah. Actually, they have a really nice um, uh, get launcher type model too. I thought. Yeah, yeah they, like I was going to mention that one. Yeah, they do. And a bolt thrower, I think. Um, so some war machine options there. Okay, um, should we call it that? I think we could go on and on about the miniatures sure. because okay. it's there's loads of it out there. Um, I'll just I'll just pimp the ninth age miniature library pages, right? Go and look at them; they're really good. <laughs> I promise they, you, they, they are. I put a lot of work are. into them. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, we'll call it to that. Um, we've been going on for a while. I think it's going to be a record episode. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I've, I've had a, l a lot of fun talking about this, um, and That's I hope you, you have too, and I hope the audience have enjoyed it too. Um, yeah, I hope they didn't get too bored. <laughs> uh, like one can only hope. Um, so the last thing to do is uh, to check up on the on the painting progress. How have you been doing, uh, Remy? 
So I've got uh, a shaded bone on, <laughs> on 17 of the 20. And now, <laughs> now we can see shading to their bone parts. And there's quite a lot of bone parts on these models. I right? can so imagine. It's not too bad. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's great. Um, for myself, I've, I've um, come up good way on, on this guy. Um, uh, I, f for the sake of it, I'll try and share the screen again uh, so that you guys can see it as well. Um, but uh, that's probably no, no I'm messing up. <laughs> <laughs> share screen. We'll see it on the video later anyway. Uh, no, nothing happens. Uh, okay. Forget about that. Uh, so I painted him. Uh, the cloak is pretty much done. Though. I want to do some freehand on it, um, and uh, his um, his shirt and uh, the skin is done as well. And I've base coated a few other areas, so he's getting there. Um, it's a fun model to paint, uh, for sure. Um, okay, that's uh, that's gonna do it. Uh, thank you very much for coming on, you two. Um, <laughs> it's been a pleasure. Yeah, thanks for having me. This was great. Oh, I really enjoyed this one. It's the most fun, and like, great to meet you as well, Gene. And it was really interesting to hear your insights. And uh, thanks again for all the bat reps. And keep doing orcs and goblins, please. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see those spear orcs go. I'm actually due to kind of shift out for a little bit <gasps> and get something else. To <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Back. Yeah, I'm sure you'll be back to the to the good old green. Um, exactly. <laughs> uh, and. Uh, yeah, I, I want to thank the audience as well. Uh, those of you who have stu stuck around this long, uh, closing up on three hours now. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see you on the next one. Thank you for watching and uh, thank you for coming on. Cheers. Great. Thank you. Thanks.